Uh, I'd be like this.
All right, so we'll have a total of five then for tonight because Lucius isn't here. So we'll have your... Okay. Your call. To do any role-playing as I'm... I would say if you think... if there, there might come a point where you all decide, you know what, we might need him for now. If that happens, I'll let you introduce him and say he was just walking behind the party. You know, I'm signing into Roll20 now so I can have his character sheet up. He's with us. He's just quiet and nose on a book. That's right. He he's, he got laryngitis. He can't talk this week. He's got laryngitis. All right. Are we ready, Lonnie? All right. Let's do it. Let's launch it. What is going on? How y'all doing? Welcome to an... And let's make sure they can hear all our players. Can everybody say something? I don't make sure the testing, testing, testing. one, two, three, testing, testing. All right. Let's hope that the, uh, that the audience can hear us. Hey, what's going on guys. Welcome to another episode of the doom of Dagger Dale. This is Dungeons and Dragons with Nurbatri and some Dwarven Forge. As you see right here that the camera is in on it already. Uh, just welcome back. Thank you for coming and tuning in. If you've been watching, this is our episode 10. Man, we've been doing this now for a little bit. We are over halfway through this module. Uh, I'd say one more chapter after this, and they are right at the beginning of this cavernous area that they just saw. Um, just before we start, just want to say thank you to the Patreon supporters. Thank you to our subscribers. Thank you, and thank you to all our viewers, uh, or everybody that comes. Even if you don't, you can't give us any money, that's fine. Just coming here and hanging out with us and watching us chill and, you know, uh, vape a little bit and get fucked up and play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> so, uh, also want to thank Wargaming Recon for promoting us. Thank you to Monkey Paw Clothing and thank you to Stat Trackers. Uh, you'll be seeing me use Stat Trackers again. If you don't know what they are, I mention them every every time I play. Basically, they just make it it's much easier. I don't have to always jump into the monster manual or anything like that. Uh, I'm Tony. I'm the Dungeon Master. Uh, if my outfit didn't tell you that already <laughs> so but yeah i am the dungeon master and this is again the doom of dagger dale we converted over from fifth edition rules i uh, excuse me from second edition to be in the fifth edition rules uh we will be having another game next week uh at six to nine again next friday the 26th uh, 22nd and that will be the evil team again so i'm just gonna let everybody introduce themselves and I know I owe somebody in here if she's already in here. Uh, I know she's I not owe here some... yet. I just sent oh, her a okay. message. She should be I know, up shortly. Yeah, I know I owe some, some uh, the song Roxanne as well as another song. But I'll let uh, Young start out, and you can introduce your character. Young, are you muted? Uh, she's eating. Oh, she's eating. We will. All <laughs> I right. I see that. Well, she should do someone else right now. Okay, Eric. We'll let Eric go. Hey guys, uh, so I'm Eric. I'm playing Cutter. He's a Wood Elf Barbarian. He's the last of his tribe, the Blood Tree Clan. And uh, he has a bit of a drinking and temper problem, which is probably not a big surprise. All right. Let's go with. Uh, let's see now here. Let's go with Rich. Hey everybody, I'm Rich. I play the. Wood Elf Grave Keller, Grave Cleric, Selenar. They are um, still not quite sure if this party is going to be the death of them or not. Um, but they have their purposes, and Selenar plans to use them. Um, I will also be subbing in for our good friend Lucian tonight. He, he is unavailable. So I will also be controlling Lucius, the high elf pretentious weak and sort of <laughs> disappointing <laughs> uh, wizard uh, he's a nerd with a book obviously selenar and uh, lucius don't get along within the game outside the game everybody's yeah. awesome but within the game they rp that they're oh, no, kind of great. Antagonist, antagonistic towards each other which is really fun um let's go ahead and go with raven yeah my name is jimmy hedrix i've come from another world i've come from underground uh i am i am a durgar some people call me a durgar uh i am uh, also a rogue uh i would say i'm a thief but 
everyone's got their own vernacular, so uh, <laughs> that's that. I'm I'm tagging along to my ultimate doom uh, with this party. All right, and we got a new player tonight. We've added another person, um, and her name is actually I call her Space. <laughs> Can't even remember her real name, uh, but it's Space. So Space, if you want to introduce yourself. On space or you can call me aj if that's easier um, AJ. <laughs> i play a storm sorceress hot half elf named tempest um and i'm really glad to be here thank you for thank you guys for having me oh well, you're welcome we're yeah, thank you for bro. joining us thank you yes thank you for joining welcome. us we could use another person to abuse and troll on while we play <laughs> <laughs> fresh, yeah, maybe maybe fresh me. leave me the fuck alone Fresh meat. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Sell on our can catch a break now. Oh, um, last week the group it... had left off where they had encountered the bear. Uh, they had a great uh, battle with the bear, where Selenar was basically drawing the bear away, and they they were battling it. And then they have just entered this cavern, and there was a they had found a trap in there, a crossbow trap, but they were able to find it and you know uh get rid of it and you know disable it and now they are right at the beginning of what looks like an open area into the cavern and we have i think they've worked out how space is going to be introduced into the party so i'm just going to have space right up here Whoop. and i dropped her oh, i'm sorry here she is on oh no so I, the... I think in fact we uh pointedly just did not decide how we were going to do that <laughs> We talked about it, but we never landed on anything. All right, so it can It'll be, be cool. a surprise. Yeah, she, we'll just say a so, rogue, a rogue <laughs> pop, pops up from behind you. At, at oh no, point, she's dead. Selenar, oh, shit. At this point, Selenar looks to the rest of the party. So, rather than dealing with this sickness and everything else, how about we go? I hear a wonderful tavern there. Yeah. <laughs> No. Sorry, say um, that again. I think you broke up a little bit. Yeah, you broke up a little, buddy. That that's fine. Yeah. I was giving Tony a hard time. I said, rather than exploring all of this stuff and dealing with the sickness, how about we head to Waterdeep? I hear they have a great tavern there. Oh, you dick. You <laughs> and dick. I, I, I literally yeah. jo I joked about with that with JC before the game. I was like, well, they're probably gonna be in this area tonight, so we don't have to worry about a lot of camera angles unless they did some stupid shit like, hey, we're just gonna go to the tavern and drink tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You and, bastards. Yeah, maybe, maybe we should, make, you know, they're they're just releasing the Waterdeep thing. Maybe we should go check out Waterdeep. I mean, we can just go there, right? Oh, I God, hear just... there's some crazy mega dungeon underneath, and I know Tony has more than enough <laughs> stuff to fully build out the Dungeon of the Mad Mage to scale. Okay, I'll just yeah, need, yeah. I, I just need about 12 to 15 hours to to, to, to get some of the dungeon done. Uh, tune That's back in. fine. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Oh, man, did I say oh, Waterdeep? I, I meant Candlekeep. Uh, I meant uh, I meant Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Uh, oh, right, of course. Sorry, we're, Dwar we're all talking about this. Dwarven Forge doesn't make any snow stuff yet. <laughs> well, Tony, don't, don't, be, don't be too upset. Sunday after you die, you'll have plenty of time to redo the uh, table. Oh, I hate you so much. Uh, it's... <laughs> so uh right but yeah um she's at the back i guess how y'all gonna do this that you see a, a, a rogue popping up here behind you or something here i'll, I'll put her in the front that maybe maybe tony yeah. um, uh just... player player to dm if you do that we will be attacking oh, okay so we won't do that yeah <laughs> we're we're not nice people <laughs> <laughs> all right well i'll let y'all decide because nope. Obviously, she's has to be entered into your thing here. Just walk up and say hi. That, that's yeah, awesome. yeah. I, I guess <laughs> I don't want to be attacked already, but I can just walk into the tavern at the same time as you guys. Yeah. You know, give somebody well, a head nod, like "What's up?" Yeah. <laughs> I think it's because most of the time we're not nice people, and even when you try to sneak up on people like us, it's kind of just like, well, we either have to beat you up. Or we have to we have to assassinate you in a way that people don't find you. Okay, but a little intro. We're not we're not at a tavern. We are uh, on the side of a mountain. Um, we are uh, entering a dungeon that was hidden away um, in in some ruins. Right. Um, so yeah, it's it's a difficult uh, decision how well, she's gonna if. If they're from this area, there's a 
there's an easy possibility that they know Manea, uh, Selenar's sister, who is currently sick in bed, and they heard that we were traveling to try to find out more about it. Right. That sounds good. That's so, it. That's but, it. That way they'd have a connection. They'd be seeking out their Manea's brother and his traveling companion, or the, Manea's yeah. sibling and their traveling companions. All right. Well, that sounds good. So I will put Sorry. her then right here, kind of behind the party. And I guess, um, how do y'all want to... Actually, let me put her in front so y'all can RP and see her new, the new mini in your group. We'll just, right, pretend, yeah. we'll just pretend that she's behind you. So, so the, mayor, the mayor sent you, uh, Tempest. Um, yeah. Manea was... Uh, one thing that Tempest would know is Manea is a tiefling who lives within the town a few hours outside of the woods. And they have fallen ill to the uh, dream sickness. All right. Sounds good to me, guys. Do it up. I'll wait till you're done. We can get started here. Killing you. So, you, uh, so you've been sent uh, to help us out, Anne, have you? Yeah. Manea sent me. She said that you guys might need help or something. Uh, All right, cool. Really... Follow us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, listen, I just go where they tell me to go, okay? That was easy. <laughs> you know... <laughs> We need a little. We need a little staple you're, button. That was easy. <laughs> so you're you're a friend of my sister. Yes. If, <laughs> if she yes, trusts you, sister. yes. I know the relation doesn't show much, but we are related. Uh, there are some bad blood in our family, quite literally. Um, if she has sent you out here seeking us, then at least for me, I can't speak for any of the others, but. I will absolutely trust what you have to say for now. Well, you don't have to worry about that because I have not much to say. So, just um, let's do this. Let's 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 go. I'm ready. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I, I I like the ad. I love the attitude behind the character. She's so, she's so ready to this go. Point, yeah. At this point, <laughs> Selenar just looks over to Cutter. Trap fodder. Oh, no. <laughs> you know. So, uh, what what race are you? Uh, what what race is Tempest? I am a half elf. A half elf. We we are elf heavy in this uh, party. We are minus indeed. Minus, minus Yuri, who is the only person who is a fallen Azimor. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and I'm. I'm a like a weirdo looking uh, uh, a dwarf, uh, so. So we have three and a half elves, a <laughs> night dwarf, a Ozamar, and a uh, Tabaxi. This is an interesting party. Yeah. yeah. Tabaxi. At least we're not all elves. Yeah. I mean, so what many... are you trying to say? <laughs> I'm not saying that's a bad thing. No, I'm saying in out of character. I'm saying a lot of the a lot of the people I play with all play elves. <laughs> I.e., I play with a lot of people who play elves. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> there's no relation to what. There's no relation to this game. It's just the fact that I play with a lot of people who play elves. So we're heading into this place. Yeah. To uh, my brain. This is the player speaking. My brain is complete soup today. I have no idea why we're here. Could somebody catch me up real quick or remind me? <laughs> uh, I need an intelligence check. I need to do an intelligence check then. Because even I forgot last game and my brain is like, wee! You know that, that that doesn't sound too bad. Can we can we <laughs> this check, <laughs> please? What do y'all need to a recap of what's going on where you're at? I just don't remember yeah. why we're here. 
<laughs> okay, I remember there were goats and eagles, and that's all I really remember. The, the beastmen, uh, you were looking for eagles, ivory, eagles, ivory. You were sent by the constable because the constable wants to find out if there's anything going on he, uh, with the night dwarves there. And if not, he, he needs you to report back anything that you might have found there. He just assumes that there might be. You went up to the mountain, you crossed the mountain, got to the beastmen. The beastmen, you didn't fight. You were nice, uh, as nice as evil could be, I guess. Yeah, and... we tried to steal the eagle <laughs> eggs. Yeah, yeah, you tried to sickly steal their babies and, and then eat one of their children. Um, yeah. uh, You're welcome. No, they told you that there was a bear and they that there was a cavern, possibly, uh, that they've heard sounds, you know, coming from the walls uh, and of, in that cavern, like echoey sounds, but no one could find out or see where the sounds are coming from. Then you went to the cavern, you fought the bear, and now you just entered the very beginning of the mouth <laughs> of the cavern and you've walked into the mouth of it and it's coming out into the uh, the area itself. And JC, if yeah. we could get a, a wider shot of that area that they're in right now, like zoom out, so they could see how wide this cavernous area is, that would be great. Yeah, so we're we're looking for those night dwarves who are uh, markedly different from the sort of dwarf that I am, even though I could be called a night dwarf uh, as well. But they're like, uh, if I remember correctly, they are some kind of like plant type creature. Yeah, we took care of one of those at the city gates and let the guards yeah. take the credit for it. Yeah, bribing okay. them with, with credit. So, um, so what do we see in front of us? I'll read the description of what you see again. Give me one moment. Although most of the cavern. Um, you already got this. Something must lie on the other side, but you, of course you were able to see it. And this room in front of you, you see a large, just as you're about to see actually on the switch there. There we go. Uh, and that little thing in the middle is the compass letting you know the direction. Um, so this is what basically what you see is right here. Whoever has, you know, night vision or dark vision and can see, uh, you see a large cavernous area. It looks to be completely from where you can see right now, a small little area just going off to the east, which is, excuse me, west right here. And then again, you have walls all along this area right here. It does, it smells, it's putrid, obviously, the bear that's been living in this area, and it looks like you see bat guano all over the ground. The ceiling itself is very high, uh, even if night vision, it's beyond 60 feet, so the ceiling is extremely oh. high in this area. Um, but the smell is rancid of guano. There's small little bugs, like they look like huge palmetto bugs inside the guano eating the actual bat shit within this cavern. So it's disgusting, right. old bones, filth, just nastiness and that's what you are at home doesn't it jimmy <laughs> yeah 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 it really does um i just want to uh cast my eyes upward and uh because i am uh at home under under the surface i have superior dark vision of a uh, 120 feet okay it's surely not 120 feet up no 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 all right, um, so you take a look up and you see that the whole, I mean, it's a whole ceiling is just covered with bats. Just all of these bats all over there. Now they're not where you're at right now. You're kind of looking like at an angle. You're at the mouth of the cave. And then if you stepped a few more feet forward, then the ceiling would go up. But you kind of like poke your head out a little and you look up and you could see once the, the you know, you're through the mouth and the ceiling actually rises, that's when you can see all the bats all up there. But you haven't actually walked through the mouth or anything. So, that, you know, at this point, you kind of just peek through and you can see some bats up yeah. there. I, uh, I turn to the party and I mentioned the bats uh, that uh, we should probably be quiet if we're to remain undetected. Um, hopefully uh, we, can, we can find the, the source of the night dwarves here. Let me hit trick. You said there was there's bats. Yeah, there's, you said there was some kind of door. Bats. Sorry, what'd you say? Let me hit tricks. You said there was some kind of door when we were out there battling the bear after the fighting the bear. You said you found something. 
I think uh, that you're talking about what I mistook for a door, which looks like a door on the map there. It looks like a lizard mouth door with LED eyes, and so uh, I mistook that for a door. Pay no attention it to that. It's not actually. <laughs> it's just a wall. Yeah, yeah, pay no attention to that. Uh, that DM didn't have two more wall pieces that were solid, so we had to use the ones that had to hold them. Just, just pretend you don't see that. Now, there was a, some sort of trap, though, correct? Yep, you got there, past oh, that last yeah. night. Yeah, there was a <laughs> trap. There was, uh, there was, uh, we just opened that door. Um, there were uh, three holes in the, in the wall, the door. Uh, and so I uh, fiddled with it. It went off. It didn't hurt anybody. Um, and, uh, and then the door opened. And here we are inside. But uh, I want to start uh, looking around um, at the walls and at the floor. Um, if there's uh, any masonry, I want to uh, see if uh, I can figure out what kind of masonry it is, what kind of traps these people use, um, if I know at all. Because as a dwarf, you know that I'm proficient in history checks on masonry. Yep, and you'd also have an advantage finding like stone, like hidden doors that are made out of stone and things like that, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's right. And and that's the kind of thing that I'm looking for. Okay. Um and you did you say you were trying to stealth as you're going through the mouth or you, what are you doing here? Uh I yeah, I, I You said you would be quiet. We should be, be stealthing, that we should be uh quiet. Uh so I think it would be uh a good thing for us all to try and be as stealthy as possible. Okay. What I'm going to do is have everybody who wants to go in decide where they're going to move to, and then I'm going to have you roll the stealth check. So if you failed, they no they notice you when you arrive at your spot, you know, if something should happen with the bats. So let's everybody who's going in do a stealth check to avoid being noticed by the batty bats. I'm going to take a toke. Well, there we go. Perfect. I've been I've been rolling with my dice, uh, the dice in, in my dice tray in front of me. Um, but if you want, I can I can roll on roll twenty. We well, I don't know if he's put. We have the dice cam ready to go, but again, it's just a roll twenty dice cam. So I don't know if JC's putting it up right now. Oh no, it, it, it wouldn't work because you didn't make me account yet. Oh. oh. Um, oh, okay. All right. So you well, can roll, you know, however you want. Then. Okay, oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep using my dice then, because uh, I've got like nice stone and bone dice that uh, are not getting used, and I want, <laughs> I want to all use right. them. So so far, all right. Lucius just got the roll that's on roll twenty. All right. So everybody's moving in. Where does everybody want to move to? Uh, I'll be one, okay, of the, one of the first people in just because I want to investigate for traps and, and that yeah. kind of thing. Alright, let me go down a list to make it easier to call out people's names. I apologize rather than everybody talk at once. Alright, so Raven, you're going in first. Yeah. And you're moving, we'll say you're at the mouth. One, two, three. Where do you want to go on the actual... I'm going to use the laser uh, pointer. I, I was thinking I would go on, the, on my right hand wall um, and uh, go around the room. All right, so you're going east then, like over uh, here. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's right. I'm gonna move along that east wall. Okay. All right, so we'll have you there. All right. Cool. And next we'll have Yuri. Where, what are you doing? Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to stay like towards the middle of everyone, so in case someone gets attacked or something, I'm like right there. All right. As so, more like a second protection thing. Are you by Are you by um Jimmy? Like you see where I'm putting the laser pointer? Just let me know. Are you like right around this area? Takes a few seconds for the stream. Do you see that on uh, on Twitch? Tempest. Yeah. I'm. I thought she was talking to Yuri. I'm. Sorry. Yeah, he's talking to Yuri. It's Yuri. Yeah, she's right. Oh, she's sorry, right. sorry, Yuri. Yuri, do you see where the laser pointer is going? Is that where you want to be? Yep, you're good. Okay. 
I'll put you there, right behind him. All right, next it is Lucius. Where do you want to go, uh, uh, Lucius or Selenor, I guess I'd say, really? Lucius will stay near Yori simply because someone with a nice big sword and uh, a nice source of hit point sink might be a good thing, um, especially since they're very, very, very low on spells. Okay. Next. And Selenor is out of spells. Ooh. That's not good. Cutter, where are you going? Um, so from my perspective, where Cutter is, I like to move into the room and then to the left. All right, so one, so, two, three. Looks like that's north. Yeah, you see the compass? Can you see the compass token? Yeah, I can't tell which one's in the end, though. Okay. North um, is to the left one. of the picture. Yeah. Right. North is okay. where I'm so putting... I'll... Where you see the dot right now, that's north. Okay, so then I would be going to the west. Okay, you got it. Put you right around there. Okay. And next we have... He's not here. No hatchet. Selenar, where are you going, buddy? Selenar will actually put Selenar to the south point of the compass. Directly, like, directly below the compass. You got it. Right there? I assume I got it yeah. right. Okay. And next, uh, last but not least, our new player, Miss Space. Or do um, you prefer another pronoun? I'm sorry. Huh. You're fine. Um, you can move me... I just want to be at the in uh, the entrance. Or who... I don't know who I'm looking at right now. Who, who is this? Uh, is this the rogue? Yeah, I'm gonna get you. I th I, for some reason, I thought you were a rogue. I'm gonna get you another mini at the break after I sing. Uh, but do you want to be behind Selenar right there, or do you want to kind of go over here by Cutter, or over here by, uh, you know, Yuri and Jimmy? I think by Selenar. Okay. Oh, 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 he's gonna love that already. You got a new friend, Selenar. <laughs> All right. So, let's see. Stab. No. Uh, All right. <laughs> Passive perception is 11 oh, for these. So, for these bats, let's see who failed. Raven, they oh. notice Raven. Oh, no. Space. They do not notice space. They do not notice rich. They definitely don't notice young. 2d20. What the hell? Oh no, that's you rolled twice. Oh no, they do see young because she rolled a ten. I'm about to say you got twenty six yeah. for stealth. I was like, what the? F I'm like, damn, young got stealthy. <laughs> so, and then, <laughs> all right. I wish I had to roll a disadvantage because so, I'm wearing armor. Um, and Lucius, what did Lucius roll, uh, Selenar? Selenar, uh, Lucius rolled a sixteen. Selenar rolled a thirteen. Okay, so the only people that get noticed are Raven. And it looks like Cutter. Every oh, and Young, or Yuri. So at that moment, as y'all are walking in, everybody's kind of quiet. Oh, it's flapping from the ceiling. Now, of course, Jimmy, he's able to see this, and he's he's like, "Guy, right, they come! You won't yeah. quiet enough!" Coming from the ceiling is all these bats. One gets right on Jimmy, and they're like, "You're the one that wasn't quiet, Jimmy." Or I don't know. Yeah, that's right. You're the one. Damn it! Stop eating. And then, of course, one comes right down on Young. You see another swarm of bats. And then you got two on Cutter, because Cutter got big balls all the time, so. <laughs> I, wish, I wish Space had been here for that time on the bridge. That was crazy. All right, and the murder. She missed the murder, too. That was, that's right, Space. You missed the murder and the, and the cannibalization. Both of the murders. Yeah, the yeah, murder heard, and the cannibalizing. Somebody, um, somebody ate a leg. No, they ate the whole body. That's how the evil team got rid of the evidence. Is they they ate all of it, 
uh, and then Cutter was on a bridge, and that was an epic moment. I have to. I didn't think he was going to pass that. But anyway, so you're, the, you're the, probably thinking about all the legs I had in my backpack. <laughs> oh, that's right. Jimmy carried around <laughs> meat for days to cook. Yeah. So, so all the, these bats squeak, come down. They're you know, the leathery wings. You can hear them flapping, squeaking. They're making that that bat sound. <laughs> All right, that's a shitty bat sound. All right, <laughs> but what are you? What are you gonna do, baby? Right? So, yeah. you know, they're coming down. They're, they're attacking. They're, they're, they start getting on Jimmy. They start swarming. One starts swarming around oh, Jimmy. Man. You I'm see them start. Out. And now this never an, happens to me. And then another one. You know, young as sin. She's an asthma. Her, her her wings have been dark because she's fallen. But they start getting on her wings, getting underneath them. You see pieces of her wings starting to get flutter and messed up. And then Cutter, as he had gone to the west, he's a little bit farther from the party. Two sets of swarm of bats come down. They, he just looks like a, a lone target, and they just start get. They started his legs, and they slowly work their way up. And Cutter almost becomes a mass of leathery black floating wings. You can't even really see him. In Inside as he's uh, swinging his arms. So let's roll for initiative. I'm not going to say to surprise you because obviously Jimmy saw him by looking up. Yeah. So no surprise round. Uh, my initiative is ass. Okay. Y'all did good because my initiative is, is shitty. I got a six. I have a ten. That's Jimmy Hedrix with a ten. All right. And Yuri has an 18. 18 for Yuri. What's uh, Lucius have? 15. 15? Creepy, that's yep. the same thing I already have up here from the last game. Uh, Cutter, what does Cutter have? I only have four. Damn, he was at five last round. Wow, y'all were almost exact same. Wow. That's, cre that's creepy. All right. Um, Selenar, what you got, bud? 13. Unless let's move that up there. All right. Head tricks. What you got? Really? I'm first? No, no. What you got for your number? Your, your, oh, your, oh, oh, just... oh, uh, 10. 10. Okay. Sorry. That's right. And uh, Tony, just for logistics of spells, from the bear fight to now, how long has it been? Um, let's say it hasn't. Let's say about a half hour. Not very long. About a half hour. If you All still right, have. So then my shield of faith is gone as well. Okay. Thank you. All right. You might have your mage armor. Did you have mage armor last on? Your no, mage. Lucian has mage armor. Okay. Okay. I thought. Oh. Okay. That's. I thought you were asking for him. Okay. Um. All right, so Jimmy Hedrix, 10. And last but not least, uh, Tempest, what you got for us for your initiative? 22. Damn. Yeah, nice. Tempest? Yes. Is that initiative, though? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> the first time I rolled 21, I agree with me. <laughs> All like right. every other time. Well, then, top of the round, it is our new player. All the chat should welcome space to the group. Uh, and she just started playing D&D, &D, by the way. She said like six months ago, if I'm not mistaken about it. She's only been playing for about six months, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but it is top of the round. It goes to you then, space. What do you want to do? I'm going to cast Mage Armor on myself. And um, I'm going to move back like five feet from Selenar. Okay, that would be one square. Each one of these squares represents five feet. So you'd be moving back one square then from Selenar. All right, and that's your turn then. Um, it is now Young's turn, or Yuri's turn. So there's a, there, I'm assuming there's a swarm of bats on me then. If I'm yes, they're, they're not next to you. This, I can't obviously put them in your square, I, but I, do, I just want to represent yeah. the bats, but they're actually in your square. They're swarming on you and flying all around you, so. You know, you're, you're again. They're actually on you. You're not. They're not next to you. So I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use. Just I'm gonna start attacking them one by one, and I'm gonna see how many I can get with my hits. Because I know it's a swarm, but I have to hit them. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so you're going to try to attack the bats? Yep, I'm going to try to attack them. I'm wondering, and maybe the chat can tell me this, should there be disadvantage, I would think, because she's actually being attacked? Like, like all, well, no, no, probably not. No, no, no. Because the swarm's all around her. She's literally just swinging wild to hit them. Yeah, so no disadvantage, yeah. All right, go it's for factored it. In, it's actually factored into, like, their AC and stuff like that. Yeah, their AC is a little better. Okay, cool. Than they would be for a single bat. Go for it, young Yuri. And the... She roll? Uh, I'm not seeing it. And me either. Yuri? Is that uh, Yuri? Did we lose her? We're good. I, I can see her sitting there. Oh, damn. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that's... You did that right, Yuri. I think you just typed one. You might want to just, like, actually... Yeah, no uh, space. Yeah, no space. I don't want to... Slash roll, space... Okay, that wasn't much better. But Not yeah, really. That, that was great. <laughs> so she rolled a two. <laughs> Instead of a one. Yeah. Okay. Woo! Oh. All right. So I, I tried to hit them and I went whoosh. <laughs> you just, you just, so, so, you know, Yuri is, is you know, the Azimer is flipping out. She starts, she's going wildly. She's trying to decide she's going to try to hit an individual bat. And as she, like she said, she's going just whooshing all over the place and nothing. They just all separate from her sword. It's just going through air and they're still getting on her. You see him landing on her. They're on her face. They're on her wings. She's trying to slap him away. The sound, the screams, it's a, it's a vision out of hell almost. The actual number to hit was actually a six. So it's two plus four, it's actually a six. I didn't put the modifier in there, but I don't right. think I hit anything. No, you still didn't hit. No, still Sorry. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> All right, That's it is okay. Lucius's turn. Lucius. All right. Lucius is going to see, how close is the nearest swarm to Lucius? Well, they're technically in the character spots that they are attacking. So okay. Lucius would be, one well you're right ne right next to um obviously uh, uh yuri so right there you're less you're right next to yuri as she's being attacked and you're about five feet if you moved over one more square you'd be right next to jimmy who's also being attacked going to use lucius is going to use toll the dead toll the dead on the one surrounding Yuri. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why it made an attack roll when it's a wisdom saving throw from the swarm of bats. Uh... I'll put you it's got some images. script in there that I don't even understand. What is CS greater than 20? I don't even know that myself. <laughs> That's weird. But anyways, yeah, forget that. Um, if, it's a wisdom save. Yeah. yeah. Well, that is underneath a DC 13 wisdom save. If yep. they fail, they take seven necrotic damage. Got it. Hold on. You're, which one are you going for? The one getting Jimmy or the one getting... Uh, You're right. right. You're right? Okay. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, I failed. So they will take seven necrotic damage. Okay. All right. We'll call that Swarm 1. That is Swarm 1. Oh, let's get that. All right. He's immediately going to back up next to the new individual, uh, Tempest. All right. That was you said. going to be focused and concentrating on Yuri. He's just going to back the hell away. And that was six hit points of damage you did, right? Seven. Seven. I'm sorry. Okay. So thank you. I thought I thought I was missing one. All right. So, Stellinar. I mean, not Stellinar. Lucius. Even though he has laryngitis this week, our missing player, and that's not talking a lot. Lucius stands up. He <clears throat> clears his throat from his laryngitis. 
and tries to talk and Elvin is just able to get out the magical words. You see him go to his component pack and he pops out a bit of, uh, looks like a star, stardust almost, and this white dust goes into the air, it begins to sparkle all in front of the party and creates a light that shines and reflects off the mossy and, and water and nastiness of the actual cavern that you're in. At that moment, each spark goes to the bats, it tries to attach to each bat, and it finds six bats within the swarm, and each one, or seven, and you see seven bats within the swarm just fall down out of the swarm itself as the sparks hit them and their uh, wings ignite into a white flame and they fall burning. You smell burnt rat meat, uh, burnt bat meat. Jimmy, you get hungry. Yeah, of course I do. I'm so hungry. I can smell that. Oh my God. I need some little crunchy uh, uh, rodents. And now it is Selenar's turn. Selenar sees that the group mostly got it over there. Uh, turns and looks at Cutter. Sort of cocks their head to the side. Well, this is going to be interesting. Steps up next to the two swarms that are sort of circling around Cutter to where he's between the two of them. Uh, Selenar is going to grab their holy symbol and say a single word in Celestial. Uh, and a burning radiance will erupt from them. So both of the swarms need to make a constitution saving throw. Are you attacking the same swarm? That, which one are you attacking? No, I'm, I'm attacking both of the swarms that are on Cutter. Okay, so that's swarm three and four. Okay. DC and we need... 14 constitution save. Okay. Ooh, failed on one. Let me do the next one. Let me do the next one. Ooh, another failure. And what are you doing? What was what are you actually doing to him? Word of Radiant. They each take four Radiant damage. Okay. All right. Uh, do you want to describe it or do you want me to describe it? I already did. Oh, okay. Well, then we don't need a battle description then. All right. So they take four each, you said? Yes. All right. Got it. It is now Jimmy Hedtrix is up. Right. I am... Uh, I, I, have, I have not been underground for a little while. I've been... Uh, uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't practiced my sneaking abilities uh, very well. So I'm I'm disappointed with myself, but uh, I I'm like I'm like uh, I'm back backing up against that wall beside me, and uh, and I and I'm I smack with my hand, but then uh, realizing that's not going to do anything, I have to remember myself. So I, I grab my <laughs> sword, and I and I uh, I swipe my sword through the air, um, and then I grab my dagger with my other hand. And swipe uh, my dagger through uh, through the air, uh, trying to hit as many bats as possible. Um, and I believe technically that's called uh, a two weapon attack. <laughs> Go for it, man! So, All right. So, are you getting a two weapon one, attack? Are you really doing it? Do you have that ability? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not something like anyone can do it. Uh, you just lose your. Uh, I believe it's yeah, it's your a negative proficiency on your second attack. Oh. No, you lose your you lose your damage rider on the second attack. It's just a straight die roll for the damage. Oh my god! Modifier. They, they are so right. merciful to you. And second edition was like negative yeah. four. Yeah, <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> negative four to your roll, bitches. All so right. my uh, my short sword is that is a oh, 16 plus four is twenty, uh, which I assume hits. Yes, that hits. Um, and I've got uh, D6 plus two uh, damage. That would be seven damage. Okay. And you're obviously attacking your swarm attack again. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so so sure. seven. And then what was the other one? And then the dagger um, is going to be 15 plus four is 19. And then just a straight D4 for my uh, damage is two. All right. So you do a total of nine damage. All right. Yep. 
or you want to describe it's not dead but you want to describe how you oh, yeah you know, i've uh, i've done that i've uh, i've uh, swiped through the air with with both of my uh with both of my uh weapons um after remembering myself and and telling myself not to panic uh so now i'm in battle mode and uh and i'm ready for uh for my next uh my next move you made up for it with those rolls your party's like yep. looking at you like all right i he's all right. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I just realized something, though. I should have looked at this. See, this is why I wish I didn't see the Swarm of Bats and Star Trek. They actually have a resistance to piercing and slashing. Oh, so that was uh, half damage. Yep, and the same with the other ones. I'm not going to do it for the other ones. I'm going to do like Selenar did in his game. You know, where the other ones. But on this one, since I just remembered it right now, you actually yep, yep. were going to say you did, uh, I guess we'll take the higher number. Half of nine would be actually 4.5. We'll just say five. You did five damage. So we'll add back four. Right, cool. Thanks. Oh no, I know you're not thanking me. You're like, <laughs> you're like, dick. <laughs> dick. All right. For rounding up, I'm thanking you for rounding up. Oh, there you go. All right. <laughs> so um, now it is the swarm of bats turn. The first swarm of bats. We'll just say it's gonna go. Uh, that's number one. That's actually on Yuri. So let's have that do roll and. Sorry about that. Oh, my thing isn't coming up here, guys. There it goes. Okay, now we're gonna bite. Who's All this right. guy attacking? Uh, it's attacking Yuri. Yuri, what is your AC? Hold on, I have to double check again because my page went kablamo. Oof. No problem. Uh. In the meantime, space, I just want to let you know that although it's not on your character sheet, I did add in your extra two AC with your your with brace. Armor? Yeah, oh, actually, she said, she said she had some bracers or something, but they are something like that from her character. But I don't know how she got that. How did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, time to vet this. Uh, time, time for an audit. Jim, Jim, her. <laughs> Technically, she could have gotten it either from. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna butcher it. She could have gotten it from Selenar's sister, as a gift. She was I like, his, "Your sister was like, screw you! I'm giving it to this person." <laughs> Yeah, and then I'm just gonna look at him and just smile, you know. Right. Nice oh, that is not the thing to do to Selenar. He'll tell you that. Family crest He'll be on fine. it and everything. Yeah, not I not the thing to do. My sister gave away the very rare <laughs> magical bracers that our ancestor wore to just some rando from the street. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know. That should be it's making so it up random. I'm seeing lots. I'm seeing lots of side eye. I, I think I see lots of side eye from Selenar, man. He's, he's side eye. That, that could be her best friend, and you don't know that. The you, fact you that she gave with your sister, didn't you say? You said you the didn't fact... get along with your sister. No, actually, I, she's one of the only ones in the family Selenar does get along with. Okay. But the fact that she gave them to you is fine. The fact that you tie dyed them and bedazzled them is oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Also, Tony, that does wow. not hit. Uh, AC is a 15. Does not hit. Okay, perfect. All right. So, next then, since we just had our went off there, next we are going to attack Jimmy Hedtrix with another right. bite. Uh, how many hit points does that thing have? I have to make sure I'm using the right one. My armor uh, class is 13. No, no, I'm looking at the hit points for them. Just, no, know, because yeah. they, they're different, depending. All right, so Jimmy Hedrick's attack here. Uh, that is That hits. Okay. Damn. Five, All right. five piercing damage. All right, so um, the bats, you know, Jimmy had taken his dagger. He had taken his sword, the short sword, the dagger. He had sliced. He had literally sliced bats in midair where you saw them 
cut open and the lungs and the heart were exposed where the heart ventricle on one side would still be beating as the blood would rush into the the, the blood of the, the, the cavernous area of the lungs of the dead bat. So these bats are pissed at Jimmy, man. I don't know how yeah. a bat could be pissed, but they are. So they start coming in and you know, Jimmy's still trying to go around and the first one gets on his face and you see it literally bite a chunk out of Jimmy's face. And what's worse is you hear it and the sound of ripping flesh is a horrible sound. It doesn't sound like paper. It's just this this horrible, horrible pulling sound that you can, all of the party can hear and somehow instinctively it, it makes them sick to their stomach that hear that sound. The next one goes on his arm as he was raised up. It gets underneath his arm on his tricep and it's able to bite a piece of flesh out. At this point, blood is profusely pouring down Jimmy's face. It's going into his mouth. The next one's on his forehead. It bites above his eyes. He's trying to protect his face. Oh, now they're both on his face. He's screaming. Three bats. Then another one comes and they're just all attacking. And the next one, the final one gets on the, the back of his actual thigh it, it rips of it and he tries to grab him but they just fly away he's profusely pouring blood it's just horrible you see the bits of flesh actually from the cheek wound because it wasn't able to pull off all the flesh it kind of like string cheesed out so a little bit of flesh is now hanging down the side of the cheek as jimmy is fighting yeah that's this is why i panicked at first <laughs> <laughs> i know how deadly these bats are all right so the next bat um, they're gonna try to, obviously they're on cutter and I think they both have more than half yes they do so let's go here uh oh there we go okay and pretty sure that misses cutter 11 yeah I have a 17 yeah cutter doesn't get hit by much of anything Including including orcs. Alright, next one. <clears throat> next is gonna attack Cutter. Oh, it misses again with the seven. Alright, so Cutter, he's over there. And you see at this moment the bats kind of like start coming around Cutter. Cutter's like, F that. He literally rips open his shirt to show his like his uh elven pecs and he starts just moving them around. The bats don't even know what to do. The echolocation is bouncing off his pectoral elven muscles. And they just can't, they can't see. Yeah, I'm, I'm smoking too much shit tonight. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I am, man. Something wrong now. Pectoral okay. muscle, pectoral Control. muscle defense. So they're Only flying. tobacco products. <laughs> yeah, it's only tobacco. Absolutely. Uh, so they're, this is an adult stream. So they're flying all around Cutter and they just, they're going in, they're going out. He's able to deflect one. He smacks it out the air, it hits against the wall, but it doesn't die. It just makes a squeak and comes up. The next one, he kicks with his foot. He tries to step on it, but it quickly scampers out of the way. And none of these things are cut. He's just smacking, swishing, ducking, and pecking. All right. The next one tries to attack Cutter. Oh, wait a minute. I already did twice. I'm sorry, Cutter. You got... That's right. I'm already done. Ugh. Oof. Doesn't matter what a missed name. It's now Cutter's turn. Hopefully right, I used cool. up that bad roll for you. All right, cool. So, um, aside from my packs, I'd probably be using my large wooden shield to protect <laughs> myself from this wave of darkness and teeth. Uh, and I'm going to um, scream out and... Uh, you know what? F it. I'm going to throw. So I want to make sure I have the rules right. I can drop a shield for free, and I can draw a weapon for free as long as I attack with it. Correct? You can what? I'm sorry. You can drop a I shield. Sure, I want to make, make sure I have the rules correct. I can draw. I can draw a weapon for free as long as I attack with it. Correct? I, I you can draw that... a weapon as part of your attack action. You can interact with one object for free on yeah. your turn. So you can draw a weapon. You don't have to attack with it. Okay, cool. So, um... Thank you, Rich. Yeah, so mm -hmm. he's he's pissed off that these damn things are trying to eat at him. So he's going to throw his shield down, pull his great maul off his back, Ooh. and great. He's going to swing his bat into the mass of winged creatures, so I'll make an attack. My, my armor cost will be lower now, but more damage. Man, okay, great, so. great malls are like just on the edge of uh, not having a reach. 
A great mole does not have reach, right? Only a nine. Fortunately, that does not hit. Alrighty, no problem. All right, so Cutter takes out that huge great maul. You see it. He's like smacking it against his hand. Dude looks badass, man. Like total badass with this thing. You know, he goes to swing it, but he's just, you know, maybe for whatever reason, he was just a little bit off edge from that last kick when he was able to kick and smack that back into the wall. So his foot just pushes on this little bit of gravel and it sets him off balance and the maul goes down and it doesn't hit any bass and just slams into the ground. There's a huge echo within the chamber and you could swear for a second, almost feels like the ground itself rumbles with his massive power. All right. So next it is up to Tempest again. I'm going to, as a bonus action, I'm going to use Tempestuous Magic and I'm going to put that. In. I'm sorry, you broke up right there at the end, Tempest. What did you say? I said I'm going to, as a bonus action, I'm going to use Tempestuous Magic, and I put that in the roll 20, and then I'm going to going to cast Chromatic Orb. Okay. Ooh. Oh my god. Damn! That's a 26. How is that not a crit? Oh, she rolled a 19. Yep. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and roll your damage on that chromatic orb. Which one are you attacking? I'm going to attack the one right in front of Cutter. Okay. Okay. So swarm three. I really wish that was a crit. I'm... So close to a crit. <laughs> I, know. I know. You're rolling well. This this bodes well. Well, what's... Um, I don't think that's your damage right there for the chromatic. It's not. I just hit the thing twice. <laughs> Click on the word chromatic orb, it'll come up with the damage. Yeah, it should just. That's yeah. like you click on it in the chat. Click on the word chromatic orb here, and it'll roll. It'll allow the damage to show up. Hmm. Oh, you got it. Thank you. Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. Seventeen. Well, Sweet. that is that is you so know many what? of them. Let me see. Uh, she's rolling on. Man, so close. All right. Uh, you want to describe its space, or do you want me to describe your attack? Describe it. Pass it, too. All right. So what chromatic, what one did you use? Fire, ice, what did you use? Acid. Huh? Acid. 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 Okay. Whoa. So, you know, spa uh, Tempest steps up. You know, she literally seems to just this look comes over her her eyes roll back green her skin begins to bubble itself you see smoke and bubbles of acid begin to drip out of her hands but no there's no pain in her you can tell it's a feeling of power and exultation she takes a clump of the acid that's forming around her hands and forms it into a ball and at that moment a light forms it into a perfect spear and she hurls it at the bats it goes through the air trailing smoke and dripping acid into the stone itself Itself. You see little bits of the stone start smoking up. It looks like, you know, the alien, the acid, from the alien, you know, just burning through, you know, the actual ground. It hits the bats with a maze, such force that the bats themselves are thrown against the wall. You see each bat that initially hit against the wall just instantly melt and drip down the wall. It ooze of pink and red and just brown and white from the bone and just the green itself. Other bats who had just caught a little bit of the side of the, the splash, they too, the wings seem to just melt off one of the bats as it falls down, screeching in pain. That sounded like a god a pig. It sounded like a, yeah, sorry about that. All right, so it's squealing and, you know, and she's just, it, it, it tends damage almost all the bats. There's literally one bat left in the, the out of all that. 17 bats just all fell down, burning, bubbling, oozing until there's nothing left. The smell is just, it's almost unbearable to some, but again, Jimmy is hungry. All right, so minus 17. Um, and then I'm just gonna look at Solinar and say, could a random do that? Oh! 
Oh. She got jokes. <laughs> Selenar, are you there? Or are you muted? Oh, Selenar just side eye. Oh, side eye. Who saw that? You and Lucius are going to get along really well, uh, Space. Oof. <laughs> Sel Selenar's going to. All right. So next up is Yuri. Hello. So I'm gonna hopefully roll and do better this time. Hopefully. I'm gonna. No. No, you did not. <laughs> Damn, Yuri. All right. Uh, yeah. So Yuri is still, you know, she, 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 she is just flipping out and losing it. You know, as an Asimar, she's not used to being surrounded by bats. You know, these things attack, going after her wings and flying out. The, the shock and the suddenness is just really getting to her. And she just begins to swing wildly in panic and just misses, you know, critically misses. Uh, and just hits absolutely nothing as her sword clangs to the ground, you know, and it sends a shiver up her arm from the vibration. All right, so next is Lucius. Lucius is watching what's going on, seeing all these bats still swarming. Um, the ones that are, just as a quick recap, the ones that are currently surrounding uh, Jimmy and Yori, which of those two looks like there are fewer bats? In them? Uh, hold on. Give me one second, Sonic. I think mine only took five hit points damage. Number one has 15, number two has 17. So yes, the one that was around Yuri has less. And then the ones around Cutter has only looks like one bat. And the other looks like it has a bunch load of bats. Load of bats. Well, with that, uh, they're going to toll the dead at the one that has fewer bats in it. On uh, Yuri? On Yori, um, spell save DC of 13. For some reason, it didn't actually like put the proper stuff in, so give me a moment here. Boop. There we go. And it needs to make a DC 13 or take, wow, three necrotic damage. So oh. many necrotic damages. Do I need to say uh, wisdom save? You got it. Wisdom save DC 13, or it's going to take three necrotic damage. Because now that it's lost some of its hit points, it's going to be taking a D12 instead of a D6. It failed. So, and it takes, uh, you said six hit points? Three. Oh, oh, three. Okay. Three hit points from the one attacking Yuri. You got it. All right. So, you go to cast Toll the Dead once it, you know, and again, a light seems to come up. Now, this time is Selenar steps forward. Lucian. Uh, Oh, Lucian. Oh, it's my bad. Yeah. Lucius steps forward uh, to do this uh, Toll of the Dead. You see a light actually come from the ground and, and whisper. It's like a wispiness goes into his feet and it goes up his legs. The armor and what he's wearing, his robes, seem to, the light seems to come from within and outside of his robes now pushing through the fabric itself so he begins to glow. At that moment, he seems to pull this light out of himself into his hands into a wispy wispy wave and pushes that wave towards the bats it hits the bats and a few of them just squeak and fall and three more seem to just fall down to the ground they're not moving just burnt up and squeaking and their little wings just roll up almost looks like when an insect dies it just kind of curls its arms the same thing all right so three come off the one that attacked yuri All right, and it is now Selenar's turn. Selenar once again will target the two swarms with a word of radiance. They need to make con saves, DC 14. Okay, con save. Of course. Okay, that's one. What about the other one? Yeah. Right. The second one's going to take six radiant damage. Okay. Which one... One had only one bat, and one had a bunch of bats. Which one do you want to have your your damage hit? If you're going to 
The option would take the one with a bunch of bats. You want to hit the one that has a bunch of bats? Yes. Okay. All right, so that would be number four. And how much damage did it do? Six. All right. So that so one bat heard the sound waves coming towards it and just flitted it out of the range. <laughs> All right. Oh, you're going to describe your attack? Go ahead. I'll wait. Well, it's just, I'm saying, if, if, since it's a ward of radiance, it's that goal location. It easily lets it just dodge out of the way, especially with a net 20. But the other one did not, though. So the other, that one bat was able to just skitter away, even though it's still on cutter, flying around. But the other bats, they're so engaged attacking cutters. This, you know, Selenar, it looks like, now this is different. There's not a white light this time. It's actually like a statically, like a misty red that seems to come around Selenar's hands itself. And it's a liquid begins to drip from his hands and form into an actual, just, it seems like it's physical, but yet it's a sound. As he takes that, he stretches it out. And at that moment, he they. pushes it into the air. It becomes actual, they, I'm sorry, as they push it into the air, it comes forward and you see it explode and become sound waves itself. And the waves go straight into the bats. It hits the bats and actually smushes the bats against the wall and the floor itself. And you see six more bats fall down. All right. And chat, I'm sorry if I'm not talking to you as much. Um, it's because I'm trying to, you know, it's a little bit hard when I'm, I'm DMing a battle to look at the chat screen. All right. So next is Jimmy Hedrix. That's me. Uh, I'm going to keep uh, swinging my sword and dagger. I'm not moving away from them. I don't want to incur a uh, 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 an attack of opportunity. But I will keep uh, swinging as uh, as well as I can. All right. And that'll be uh, with my short sword uh, and my dagger. Uh, I have a... What is that? Oh, that's 18 plus 4 is 22 with my short sword. And uh, that is 5 damage with that one. With my dagger, I have 18, which I assume hits. Yep, yep. And, uh, oh, that's a d4 plus nothing. Uh, one. All right. So what's your, your total you've done for damage here? Uh, yeah, I didn't leave my dice open uh, like I wanted to. Uh, does anyone remember what I rolled the first time? Oh. Uh, I forget. <laughs> okay. Oh, it was, I think it was five. It was five plus one is six. So have that, and it's uh, three. Okay, so you've done three damage total to the ones that are that are attacking uh, you still. Right. All right. Minus three. All right. Yeah, and I'm I'm still uh, I'm I'm still like like stabbing and, and slashing and and uh, trying. <laughs> These things are ripping my flesh off though. Uh, which makes uh, which makes it a little bit difficult. That's probably why I'm only doing uh, three damage. They like the dark meat. Yeah, no, they do. Well, you're a Dugar, man. That's what it is. What it is. All right. So, uh, Jimmy has gone, and you've just described your your battle. You were slashing, yep, cutting. Yeah, that's the end of my know. turn. Yeah. Yep. And now it is the bat's turn, and the first one. Let's go attacking Yuri still. All right. And that is going to do a... How many hit points? Oh, nope, not there yet. So it's still... There's more than that. Oh, it's going to miss. Oh, no, it's a crit. Holy shit. All right. Critted! DM critted! Woo! Wow, nice. We're going to kill a player, baby. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. That is a total of 12 damage. Yuri, what does that put, what does that do to you? Yuri, are you there? She might be muted. Are you muted again, Yuri? Yuri! Yuri! Where are you? <laughs> Where'd she go? You, I can see you there. Are you muted? We can't hear you. Um... But it was 12 damage, right? 12, yeah. I guess, bites piercing damage. 
I can look I at her. I guess just take it off her uh, uh, character sheet. She's, yeah, I was just about to look. Not, I can... uh, she's not doing anything with her mic right now. All right, so she has a total. I don't know how many hit points she's had from before because they, did they hit her last time? I think they've already hit her. Well, yeah, if you open up her uh, her character sheet, you'll be able to. Just yeah, I see, but I don't know how much she already had off, so she might not be. Oh, keeping... right. Yeah. Well, we'll just have to wait. And Yuri, Yuri. Yeah, she she just disconnected. Oh, uh, we've had a DC. That's why she wasn't there. And there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we will save that move because it's obviously in roll twenty. We can always just come back. Yeah, and... we'll come back to that. And we'll just remember that Yuri has to take off a buttload of hit points. All right, so the yeah. next one is going to attack Jimmy Hedtrix. Yuri has that... returned. Is she back? All right. Who's taking a buttload of Hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're taking a buttload of damage. Yep, Yuri, got... you took 12 hit points of damage. I'm sitting right here, dang it. Are you still, are, are you still up? Or does that put you down? Uh, what's, the, what's the hit? Well, it was 12 damage. I definitely hit because it was a crit, so. Uh, it was 12 damage altogether. Nope, I'm still up. Okay, Ooh, so Yuri nice. is still up. All right, so now we are on. We're going to attack a Jimmy. Let's see, that's if that's, let's see if that's less than half. Nope, still at that, still at that point. All right, so going for Jimmy. Yeah, I've got a crit again. armor class of thirteen. Hit that. Oh, another what? crit! Oh, <laughs> I, God, I, I actually said crit again, and it did. Oh Jesus! Okay, I'm giving it to you, man. But that's only eight damage. I'm giving it power, There's... man. Yeah, I mean that's was, that's was definitely more than the last hit. And the best part is they know that's not a fake roll because my group, the players, can see my rolls on roll 20. That's why we want to get this roll cam. So they know those two crits in a row are real rolls. Yeah. <laughs> They're legit. Yeah, right, yeah there's, there's no, no fake rolls. rolls. Tony doesn't pull punches. All right, so let's describe these two hits, you know, because both of them critted on, on Yuri and Jimmy. I didn't get a chance to describe yours. So in these both attacks, the both swarms come down. You see them surging around Yuri and Jimmy. They seem to be going faster and more excited than they were before, even though they've lost some few numbers. And at that moment, they seem to coordinate an attack so both Jimmy and Yuri can't defend themselves effectively and strike down. The first swarm comes on Yuri in a passion. It goes on her eye, and literally the first one rips a piece of Yuri's eyelash off. She can't even fully close her eye anymore. She can see out of it anyway, because part of her eye has been ripped, and the other piece of flesh is dangling into that side corner of her eye. Blood begins to rush into Yuri's eye as she screams in horrible pain. It's, oh, it's disgusting and looking. The next one goes for the side of her face just like it did Jimmy, and it rips a, another piece of, a piece of flesh from her face the same way it did Jimmy, and and now she has that same wound it's pouring down on the left cheek though and now it just and the other ones continue to go all around yuri biting ripping pieces off her another one comes right underneath her neck it's going down towards her chest she tries to catch it but all too late it's able to take a piece and fly away the blood spits up enough and it gets into her mouth she looks at jimmy in horror and desperate help but jimmy can't do anything <laughs> he himself is being attacked if they come in uh, now jimmy he tries to slice with his his, his dagger slice with his short sword but they plan on these bats are somewhat intelligent they definitely dodge it and take advantage of his continually same attack and, and predictable attack and now they come in this one goes to the same wound that was already open and bites more out of the same wound you can now see the teeth out of jimmy's jaw as he's screaming in pain he as he opens up and tries to scream though there is so little flesh between the hole and what was left of his mouth that he rips the side skin all the way off the jaw of his mouth he's just Oh, completely hanging. There's a complete slice coming from the end of his jaw all the way to where his mouth opens, hanging open with little bits of flesh. He tries to push his flesh back up into his own mouth. It's a, it's a horrible sight, him trying to actually fix himself. He's holding it, but blood is pouring out of his fingers. The next bat comes to the back of his ear, and it actually grips onto Jimmy's ear and 
bites off the actual bite of his earlobe as it's going away it's pulling it so much that it's a ripping tearing sound and also gets a piece of his scalp as it peels the skin all the way down his neck this is horrible they both take a buttload oh of God. damage and they're hurting uh, yeah i i uh, i definitely bite off any uh, any uh flaps of flesh that are annoying me trying to try to get between my teeth while i'm uh, while i'm fighting <laughs> i definitely just bite it off as uh <laughs> and start chewing all right so now we go to cutter and we have to attack him so one only has one hit point so that is less so we'll attack with that first Okay, that is a critical miss. The first one, and then the next one. And that still has, I think, it's the half is still up there. Let me see. Yep, so there we go. Crit again. Oh, I know, it didn't do it again. If that crit again, I would have flipped out. All right, so it misses Cutter both times. Cutter can see his friends in horrible pain. He sees the screaming, he smells the blood in the air as it's being, you know, the bats are flying around, it's dripping them. It's like a misty vapor that the bats have formed in the air of blood. A little bit of the mist actually comes on the, you know, the, his face. Cutter's barbarian half-elf rage begins to boil because he wants to get to his friends. These bats still try to attack him to stop him, but Cutter's just too fast. He once again slaps the one out of the way as he's looking at Jimmy and, and looking at Yuri over in the distance as they're screaming and looking at each other and desperate and seem to be dying in front of his eyes he takes the other one and it, it just pulls it almost seems to pull the bat and part them with both of his arms like this and the bats are just forced to move out of the way from his blatant rage as a barbarian and both of them miss all right now it's cutter's turn very nice so thank you for um describing that it's quite accurate so he's so infuriated that these flying rodents are doing so much damage to us that he's going to up his rage and do a relentless attack a reckless attack so make sure that i bat the remaining of the bats in front of me out of the way you so that off? means that i will have so he he doesn't wear a shirt if you look at his mini i have a loincloth so my shirt's <laughs> been off um, so, so he will, uh, but he will swing straight in the crowd, not even caring about his um, well-being at this point. And so I get advantage, and then uh, get advantage to attack me back when it's their turn. So I will roll twice. So it's a fifteen and a ten. So I assume a fifteen will hit. Yes, it does. Okay, so that's a two d six, right, for a maul. Uh, I believe so. Or is it one d twelve? I know it's 1d12 for a great axe. Let me double check. I'm pretty sure it's... It doesn't matter. Checks, if, you, if you want to use 2d6 right now, it's fine. It's fine. It's not, it's not that big a deal. You don't have to check. Go ahead. Roll the 2d6. I do. Um... Okay, I can I confirm since I was checking. So that plus I do extra two points because it is mm. enraged. So um, my damage is... Make sure I do that right. 12 points bludgeoning damage. All right, which one do you want to hit? Either which one you hit, it's going down. Me, the meatiest one, right in the crowd, screaming oh. out, Rah! All right, well, that one is down. That's Cutter's Barbarian Rage cuts through all 12 of the bats. His maul comes down. The rage in Cutter's eyes. You can almost see his eyes tearing in anger as his, his, his veins pop out of his neck. They pop out of his arm. He almost appears to grow bigger in front of you, just like that moment on the bridge. Cutter is larger than life at this moment. He takes the maul. It comes down and smashes with one mighty thing. All the bats into the ground itself. It cracks the stone and even further pushes the bat guts into the crack of stone itself. Cutter looks on with satisfaction, spits on what used to be bats. But, still, but and the one little bat is still flying around you, but it, you literally see, you see a little piece of shit fall out the back of the bat. <laughs> As it looks at its friends and what just happened, a little piece of poop falls out the back. All right, so um now it is i believe tempest's turn again i believe yep tempest you are up 
Oh, we can't hear you that well, Tempest. You're cutting in and out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you're cutting in and out. Now? Yep, yeah, that's I better. That's so. better. Um, I'm going to cast another chromatic orb in the direction of where Yori is. Okay. Does a 19 hit? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, like you got to ask, does a 19 hit? <laughs> Come on. You know that. Oh, <laughs> your God. And this one is going to be Thunder. No! All right, so you cast that one on your... All right, well, do you want to describe it? Because you just took it down. Let's see Tempest do this. Because she's in the air with tempestuous magic, uh, she's just going to, like, clap her hands like she does, like, thunderclap, basically. And in that direction, you're just going to see, like, visual sonic waves and it's just gonna all the bats are just gonna explode <laughs> Ooh, i like that though the bats explode that's pretty good i'm gonna use that a description exploding bats all right so those bats are down okay all right and next oh cutter i was only supposed to be half damaged bats good <laughs> bats right tired of these damn bats anyway all right so next oh, actually, uh, hey uh tony yes yeah you had said that uh slash and pierce slash and pierce are half damage right i'm using a blunt weapon no no it's all of them if you look on bats damage oh, resist all blunt, oh, it's blunt, got all, all the physical resistances yeah bludgeoning piercing slashing i still so did six it's all right it's all right. We'll just say you killed the one that had one hit point. You want to do that? I don't. I don't mind wounding both of them. I would just bat into the crowd. So if I don't kill it with six, that's totally. All right. So that other one's still up there with just six. My bad. That awesome description. You know what? Screw it. It's dead anyway. Because I did too good of a description. I ain't putting it up there. I liked your epic description of that. It's my fault for forgetting again. So there we go. All right. So you just took Young's down, and it is now Yuri. You are up since Tempest just saved your life, which is surprising for an evil character. But you know, I just have to show Stellanar that I'm better than him. So oh, oh yeah. them. I'm sorry, better than them. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> All RPing people in, in uh, just mm -hmm. chat, just let chat know they're just RP. <laughs> oh, I, I, I've never met Space before, but I like you. <laughs> Space is pretty. She's Anyone that's willing there. to come in and just immediately start giving me shit is okay by my book. Yeah, she's already fitting in. She's she gonna be all right, I think. All right, so Yuri, what are you gonna do though? Uh oh, did we lose Yuri's connection again? Yuri. You're muted. Are you muted, Yuri? No, I did not. We can't hear you. Uh oh. Yeah. She has uh, audio problems. And she just got that new mic, too. But she wouldn't have audio problems. I feel bad for her. That's rough. All right, well. Uh, we are stuck at an impasse here. Come on, Yuri. Everybody hope for Yuri. And uh, Exile, cause I know I owe Exile a song. At the break, I'm going to be doing Roxanne for the chat. I will yeah. be in this outfit um, and actually doing Roxanne. And then the other song, I was thinking, though, know, we don't always have to do 80s. Does anybody like Weezer Pork and Beans? No? Huh? Yeah, I like Weezer a lot. Buddy Holly? Yeah, What's with these homies dissing my girl? Why do they got to run? Do -do -do -do. <laughs> All right. Doesn't Yuri also have 
kind of wonky internet. I don't know if she has wonky internet, um, Farrah. Uh, Farrah. She, she took her headset right off. It's her turn, right? Yeah, it's her turn. Why don't, why don't we come back to her turn? Okay, okay. We'll just I guess we'll just have to do that. We're not going to have an option. All right, Lucius, it's your turn. Lucius will toll the dead once more on the swarm that is surrounding Jimmy Hendrix. Is there still them there? Yeah. Oh, oh wait, Young just typed. She got 21 to hit. So she, I guess she's typing, hitting the one Young. She can hear us. That's hitting Jimmy Hendrix. Oh, okay. Okay. Dude, roll your damage, Young, or Yuri. Since you're attacking the one that's... Sorry, Sonar, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just... Problem. Sorry. sorry yeah, I, I yeah, saw a pop-up in the chat. That's why it. I stopped. Yeah. Oh! So Whoa. another six damage. Did 12. Yeah, All right. Tw rolled 12, mm -hmm. did six damage. Reduced to six. Thank you for the reminder. All right, so that would be... Oh, hold on a second. And that one is gone, because that was magic. And this one on Jimmy, minus, six, you said uh, six damage? Let me see if anything. That was six damage, yeah. All right. The, oh, wait, but Toll the Dead, though, that's a spell. Toll the Dead hasn't been done yet. Oh, okay. Oh, that's that right. That was Yuri's that's swing. Yuri's, I'm sorry, I'm still thinking what yeah. Selenar said, because we, we jumped right there for a second. Okay, so Yuri, you come in, you know, she, with her, her, her great sword, just, oh, excuse me, it looks like great axe 1d12. So she comes in to attack and she comes down on all of these bats right in front of Jimmy. And you literally see the bats like get sliced in two, falling to the ground. What's really crazy is one bat doesn't get sliced all the way, it just gets mostly sliced. And for just a few moments, it still tries to fly until oh, it part, its body peels apart in midair and it goes down and it's still alive. You see its eye still kind of moving as it's twitching into death. All right. And You're, does six damage? Now we oh, can. can now we can hear you, Yuri. Right as your turn is over, your back. Welcome yeah. back. <laughs> and Lucius is about so to do toll of... Hates me. Oh, that sounds like what we have. So Lucius is about to do toll of the dead here. Another save. Was it wisdom, right? Yes. Okay. And they're going to take eight damage if they fail. They did not fail on the one that Okay. You okay. So, do you want to describe your failure, or, or do you want me to describe? Go for it. All right. So, this time, he goes, uh, the Toll of the Dead, Lucius walks forward. You see the same wispy vapors of white light go into his legs and through his armor. And he tries to, once again, push this light towards the few bats that are still attacking. It looks like, were you attacking Jimmy, or were you attack, uh, doing the ones on... By Jimmy. By Jimmy. So he tried to attack the few bats that are still on Jimmy because he just saw that Yuri had come down with that mighty strike and cut a few of them in two. But something goes wrong. As the light seems to approach the bats, it just dissipates into the air itself and goes around the bats. The bats don't seem to even notice it, and it just calmly goes into the air. For just a moment, you catch the sweet smell of fragrant of flowers, but then it's gone. That flur that was a flourish with the flowers. Sorry. <laughs> All Nothing. right. And now it is Selenar's turn. And there's still one bat on Cutter, right? Yes, one bat. Well, let's walk up to it. I'm feeling <laughs> lucky. Oh, you're so brave with your one bat. And uh, I'm going to try to unarmed strike it. Flavor-wise, I want to sort of just, like, grab it, and if I succeed, I pretty much want to play Wishbone with Cutter. Ooh, I hope you succeed. Go ahead. Well, that's a critical hit. Well, there you go. You got your killed the one bat. <laughs> Dealing a grand that's total of points. five damage. It only had one hit point. It was only one hit point left, so you're, you're, you're pretty good. I grab it, hit. pretty much hold a wing out to Cutter. I grab the other one, and we'll just rip it in half. All right. So you and see, I, it. I wink at Selenar and pull it apart. Do you do like that Robert Redford wink, the meme, where you just kind of like you oh, smile? Do me a favor. Uh, roll one d twenty and roll twenty. I just want to see who gets the larger half. Oh. Okay, you got it, bud. 
So I got a 16. Go. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. You're wishboning us. Yes. We're going to see who has the larger half of bats. And Jimmy will steal it later. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's so many bats here. I don't know if I have to steal uh, Cutter's half bat. <laughs> That's true. All right, looks like Selenar got the bigger piece got, of bat there. Got more bat. All right. So that bat is now gone. Let's take the bats off with my bat minis. It was aggravating finding these bat minis, by the way. Uh, and now it is Jimmy Hedrick's turn. That's me, and there's uh, there's still uh, bats on me, and I'm I was the one who was telling everyone, hey guys, just be quiet because there's so many bats out there, and they're just like ripping me apart. Uh, they didn't like that advice, I guess. Uh, but I'm still attacking with my short sword and my dagger. I'm going to continue my attack, and that is. Uh, with my short sword, oh, that is six with my short sword, which does not hit. Uh, and with my offhand, my dagger is ten, which also does not hit, I think. So, All right. As okay. Jimmy is trying to hold in the pieces of cheek flesh that, and, and how his whole, you know, it's been ripped like somebody took a scissor and just cut like that. He's trying to hold it together, hold it in. He's still trying to attack with both hands. So when he actually goes to attack with his dagger, you know, or hold his dagger, the pain just becomes un so excruciating and the blood begins to pour more profusely. Jimmy can feel the warmth dripping onto his shoulder and running down his neck into the little piece of the stubble of his beard. It's now beginning to dry and crust and crack over that blood normally does. Jimmy can't focus. The pain is almost making him, you know, want to go unconscious. You know, he's, he, he's wavering, but he tries to attack. You know, because that's what he's in the point of, of survival mode, you know, fight or flight. And all he's doing is, is, is just wi wi you know, whisking these things around. Doesn't even look like he's trying. He can barely hold them up. And he just misses both times as the bats are easily able to get out of the way. Now it's the swarm of bats. Yeah, and they're ready that to was chomp, me. chomp on Jimmy a little bit more. Yum, 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 yum. But they only got <laughs> half. I am just a drumstick for them. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> All right, right. I, I have like for all of the creatures points. he I'm, has. I'm eaten. looking bad. Oh, that that does not hit though. Yeah, so you know, <laughs> even though Jimmy is just going, you know, doing this and 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 waving his swords, somehow, maybe the dark gods, maybe the Loth, you know, was was watching him. Uh, wait, is it? Do they worship the Loth? Okay, it doesn't matter. The Spider Queen. All right, so it doesn't matter. It's so maybe whatever the gods were watching him. And he's just able to shoo these bats in such a way that they just happen to miss him. They they just bump into each other in the air as they were trying to get away from his sword. And instead of hitting him, they hit each other. And Jimmy is, does no damage from this attack. Right, yeah. They, they start acting goofy. All right. So it is now Cutter's turn. Sun's out, gun's out. All right. Should these guys. So I'm going to then dash across the room, raising that maul high above my head, and do a leaping reckless strike again. Okay. So you can still okay. attack while dashing? Like you have that? Oh, no, I'm just running, right? I mean, I'm close enough. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying, oh. like, you actually were trying a dash from there. But okay. All right, yeah. Vernacular, yeah. Um, so... Yeah, you're close. You're close enough. I just moved it. All right, okay. go for it. I click on this. I don't know if this is actually going to be accurate, but roll anything. Did not. Okay. Oh, yeah, I did. All right. Well, you it definitely did. hit with a 22. So you still it. Right. It, oh, so it, it's not my axes. The damage is not right. It's my mall. So after we after all the damage. All right. One sec. Come on, roll a huge delay, number. Guys. Right, go for it. Two D six plus four half damage, but let's roll high. Oh damn it! Uh, only eight, so that'd be so four. Four. Yeah, okay. Four. Well, it takes you, you know. Cutter comes running across, you know, sweat dripping, pouring as he's defeated these other bats with the help of his party. He's you know, 
he jumps through the air. It's a sight to see this half elf. He's so graceful yet so powerful because he's an elf. He comes down, his muscles tense at the last moment. You could see him as his biceps flex, his triceps flex, his forearms bust, and he just comes down, smack, and four of the you know, two of the bats are able to just kind of get out of the way, but as they do, it hits their wings and they kill themselves by ripping them their own wings apart. They're flapping on the ground, the last two, the other two he smushed. Cutter goes over there, he takes his hand or takes his foot and just steps on each one and smushes their heads into the ground. All right, but still two bats left and it is now... Tempest's turn. Oh, Miss Tempest. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna use a cantrip, and I'm gonna firebolt at the the two bats. Hopefully, I hit. Is that all you got? Ooh. You don't want to see what I have, okay? I'll tell you that. <laughs> now, fighting words. Oh, this is wonderful. All right, you hit just barely. <laughs> you just hit. And all right, it is going down. Do you want to describe how you kill it, or do you want me to do it? Go ahead. <laughs> all right. So Tempest floating in the air, you know, because she's got you know her tumultuous magic, and she's floating all wisping around. You can't even see her feet. It's almost like they're in a, a bank of fog, but the fog seems to move with her as she's going around. At that moment, from the fog itself, part of the wisp turn into strands of fire. She begins manipulating the fire, turning it and spinning it and spinning it almost like a, a whip itself. And then at the last minute she pulls it straight and sends it searing into the bats. It hits both bats. They crust up into flame. And before they even hit the ground, they're turned completely to ash. And the bats are down. And with Bye. that, and with that, we are gonna take a slight break because I have to sing a song I actually owe more than one song to my group. Uh, so it is time now for me to sing Roxanne by the police. Anyone who doesn't want to, anyone who doesn't want to be horribly embarrassed and humiliated, I suggest you leave now. Uh, Cause this is, this is gonna be pathetically sad watching someone my age sing Roxanne. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Because I gotta go to the bathroom. Okay. I kind of want to go get my tea, but I want to watch this. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> space, space, no space. You, I still have some level of respect from you because you don't know me that well yet. I want to keep that going and pretend. <laughs> he's, he's, he's telling us all to leave before he does this. All right, everyone, Tony? turn your he's backs, gonna, oh, no, close your eyes, cover your ears. For me about what we do in this hey, Tony? <laughs> yes. Uh, quick question okay? before you start. Um, do I have to turn off the red light? Oh, no, you don't have to turn off the red light. <laughs> Hold on. That's my computer playing because we're getting the Roxanne up. Here we go. What? Mute it first. If you just need the audio, the lyrics, mute it. Yeah, we might get taken down if you actually play the song. Okay, I'll just sing the lyrics then. That makes it actually worse. I mean, yeah. because, I mean, <laughs> it's not going to be like, no music. Oh, wait, I got the wrong one. This isn't the police. Hold on. They pulled out some Roxanne lyrics. Is it like by the trap version yeah, I can do yeah, like some kind of, not too sure how. some kind of, some kind of other crazy version. I don't know what this is. All right. Let's go. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay. You ready? This is for you, exile. Yeah. Hold on. Let me put the computer up here. I just hit my camera. So now we're all messed up. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Computers go. Roxanne, you don't have to put on the red light. The days are over. You don't have to say your body to the night.
Horse, riding the horse. Ride it, ride it, ride the horse. Pick it up, throw it away. Pick it up, throw it away. Roxanne, you don't have to put on the red light. Roxanne, oh girl, you ain't gonna put on the red light. Roxanne. You don't have to put on the red light, Roxanne. You don't have to put on the red light, Roxanne. You don't have to put on the red light, Roxanne. You don't have to put on the red light, oh yeah. That's some good stuff. Great. Okay. So, uh, so like about a third of the way song, your audio cut out. No, you're saying <laughs> that. You're joking. Don't say that. No, that's what that's what Exile was saying. That's what uh, Ranger Harley was saying. Oh, uh, my my audio went out halfway through. <laughs> but take a look at the chat. They're like the out of context dancing is amazing. <laughs> oh, <fantastic. laughs> All right. Are you? Re what other song? Can I? I owe Exile another one. Exile, you're never going to donate again. That was your own fault you did that. You made a terrible mistake, Exile. You should have never donated that much. See, that's what happens, man. Yeah? You thought I was kidding. All right. How about, uh, who wants to hear, um, how about Buddy Holly by Weezer? Oh, man. Come on. Everybody like Buddy Holly? What do you think of that, Exile? Oh, Buddy man, Holly? I, like, I love Buddy Holly. You like that song? I like that one. Singer's choice. Oh, I'm doing Buddy Holly. Okay, hold on. That's why do I hear the police in the background? I hear every you breath you take now in the background. Well, Turn that off. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I know Buddy Holly though. What's with these homies? This is my girl. Why do they got me from? What did what did we ever do to these guys? To make them so violent. And I know I'm yours. And I know you're mine. That's all time. I look just like Buddy Holly. Oh, oh, and you're Mary Tyler Moore. I don't care what they say about us anyway. I don't care about that. I don't care about that. Mm, 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 mm. Bang, bang. Oh, wait, hold on. What happened to Vix? Oh, God, YouTube's screwing us. Giving us a commercial. What is this? Oh. Oh, no, there's a commercial? Oh, no, it's just... Oh, I have to do the instrumental. They didn't put an instrumental. Bang, bang. Right, What's right, the right. matter? Oh, What's the... Lost my shoe. I can't run and I can't... Oh, that's feeling sick. What's the matter? What's the matter? What's the matter? You. What's the matter, babe? I'm feeling blue. Great solo. I look just like Buddy Holly. Oh, oh, and you're Mary Tyler Moore. I don't care what they say about us anyway. I don't care about that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I don't care about that. I don't care about that. They're praying for that. Funds are ready. <laughs> That's a great yes. song. Yes. Right. Uh, all right. If we get five more subscriptions tonight, I will sing another one. But I, I don't think there'll be five more subs tonight because no one wants to go through that much pain. But if you do, <laughs> feel free and. Uh, we could, I kind of messed up that song. I jumped ahead in the lyrics, but that's okay. We can always sing, sing another, another one, one of your choice. Yeah, next, next. Uh, if I don't know if I get a, a vote, but I want to, I want to see, uh, I see you do Bubba O'Reilly. Uh, Are you Epu Epe? Are you talking Baba Baba Yetu? Oh that's... no no, Baba Baba O'Reilly by. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. What am I thinking? The, yes. So that's uh. Hold on, that goes. That's, is that the one that's Teenage, teenage Wasteland? 
Teenage Wasteland, yeah, that's yeah. it. Don't cry, dry your eyes. It's yeah. only a Teenage Wasteland. Wait, you want me to Townsend? Oh, that's so oh, good. Here, you want me? Here we go. Bam. <laughs> Out there in the fields, I walk from my knees. I put my back into my living. Oh, man. Man, this, we are all uh, frozen except for you, and this is hilarious. Pete Townsend is a shit. Hold on, I'll be back. I, this is great. I, I gotta go to. I gotta catch a. I'll take a break, real, real quick. Stream. I'll be back. Feel free to talk to JC. That that was definitely an extra song, Exile. Oh man, that was good. This, the Who is one of my favorites. I got nothing to say, so I don't know. I don't know what to say. Okay, so can you like tell me? I want to make sure I get everybody's names right. Right. I know Young is Yuri, Selenar is. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, his his name. that's his character's name. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's the character's name. Yeah. Oh, what's your character's name? Uh, my name is uh, Jimmy Hendrix. Jimmy Hendrix. Okay. Not Hendrix though. It's Head Tricks. Head Tricks. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Jimmy Head, and that's Cutter. Yeah. Okay. So, and then we have Lucius. Lucius, yeah, and and Solinar's controlling Lucius. characters going. One of them is called Selenar. Uh, I forget his, his real name. We just call our, each other by our character names. All right, that's good to know. I just want to make sure because I probably I don't want to like mess up your names. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And uh, you guys I'm, missed I'm, it. I'm, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call you Tempest for the most part, uh, just because like I feel like it's it's appropriate. We're we're role playing together, so. Just, uh, just to. Uh, that's that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> just to just to keep us all in character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did Did you have any questions or anything? Like, I'm probably not the person to answer them, but uh, but I can give. But a you'll show. do it anyway. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh. I will give you my opinion on absolutely anything. How often does this guy, um, does he Tony sing? Because that was awesome. Oh, just about every stream. Oh, uh, yes. Every every time we get like five new subscribers, he sings. Yeah, basically. And what that time he did three songs, so that was like wicked. What did I miss? I missed Roxanne, and what were the other two? Uh, uh, Weezer, uh, Buddy Holly, um, and uh, Baba O'Reilly by the Who. Oh, Jesus. It's only teenage wasteland. Don't cry, <laughs> rise. It's only a teenage wasteland. <laughs> I, I could actually try to sing, but that would actually, you know what's odd? When I'm pretending and just having a fun, I have no embarrassment. But if I actually tried to sing, I'd have total stage fright. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's like... I get what you're saying. I totally get that. <laughs> acting like a total ass for other people is no problem for me. Especially when I have, you know, you know, about to take two space cookies right here. You see this stream? Oh, there it is. You see these? Yeah. These are space cookies. Happy cookies. Because in New Jersey, it's all legal, baby. You're about to watch your DM have a great time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Just, just, mm. just down them. There they go. <laughs> I'm gonna be fucked up. You are Cookie Monster, man. If Moon was Cookie. Mm. All right, <laughs> is everybody back yet? Yep. All right. Well, um, the stream. Before we get back, stream have any questions? Performance enhancers. Yes, Exile. Performance enhancers. Anybody in the stream have any questions? Real quick. Oh, we also, um, if you want to hire us for a game. We do virtual tabletop with Richard, and Richard did an amazing job. If you watch our game on Sunday, 
we have um, we play Curse of Strahd. I played the old man vampire hunter. And he, I didn't even know about Foundry until he showed it to me, but I wish I had known about it before Roll20 because it's freaking awesome. I mean, everything like moves, has music, it's really cool. But we do private games. Um, if you want to hire us, uh, you can do that $25 an hour. Per, well, $25, excuse me, not per hour, $25 per person uh, for a three to four hour session. And um, we could do either the virtual tabletop or we could do the Dwarven Forge. It's your choice, whatever you like. I do the Dwarven Forge games, he does the virtual tabletop. And of course, just follow us if you can on socials or whatever, that would really help us out. Just keep watching. Uh, other than that, we'll just get right back started. So, y'all have just finished the battle. I'll let y'all take it away while I chow, chow down on my soon to have fun cookies. Yeah. So, um, we had a, uh, a question in, in chat, uh, and I'm going to answer it. Uh, Ranger Harley asked, what, what do the walls taste like? Uh, they look cool. Um, and so uh, Jimmy Hendrix is going to lean in uh, with his with his nasty mutilated face and just lick the wall and see what the wall uh, tastes like. <laughs> I wonder if I should, I'm trying to think I should make you roll. Roll a constitution check for me. Constitution, all right. Roll more than 10. Better roll more than 10. Is that a, is that a save? That uh, doesn't matter for me, actually. Yeah, straight con check, just shoot con. So that is a 16. All right, well, you pass. Jim, you go out to, you know, you go to lick the wall now. For any other person, you know, that would be licking one of these walls. I'll put you here licking. That would go to lick one of these walls. They would probably throw up at the at the very best and die at the very worst. But, yeah. Jimmy, you take it and, you know, you lick it. You're like, eh. Not so bad, you know. It tastes like my grandmother's cooking all those years ago. A little bit of salt <laughs> and spice, and you know, I think it'll be fine. So, I, I do see some fungus. Uh, is there any of uh, of that fungus taste? Like I see um, fungus on the model. Yeah, you get a little. It kind of tastes like mushrooms. Like, oh, these mushrooms aren't bad either. Not too long ago, when I was eating them in the forest, they turned to out a poop. But who doesn't like a good poop mushroom now and then? After all, our DM does. <laughs> I uh, I try to determine if these mushrooms are the thing that made me roll the con save, if they are uh, poisonous. Um, roll a nature check for me. Uh, that is nature. I have a zero modifier on that. <laughs> and roll and good, bro. A, that is a nine. All right. You're not really able to deduce much about the mushrooms. You think maybe it's possible, but you can't really tell if it's poisonous or if it's just something that, you know, might be fun for people, you know, because you're feeling kind of good right. off the mushroom now. Well, either way, I think I want to uh, incorporate that flavor into my uh, next uh, pile of legs that I cook. Ooh. Um, so I'm going to scrape some of that off the wall, and if I see any, like, mushrooms growing around that i think that's that that is the fungus taste that i'm tasting. all right i'm for gonna our, harvest a little bit of that for rp element alone we're gonna say they're magic mushrooms of Faerun. Oh, so i have a so if you put those in spice. food your whole party's gonna have like that scene out of young guns where they think they see a giant chicken see that chicken right, yeah you see yeah. that chicken <laughs> yeah and so i'm i'm just gonna put it all in so i'm just gonna call it one <laughs> one dose magic no mushroom garnish. you'll be dead you'll die all right all right so all right okay, so, so how many how many do i think that we'll say I've you got. get you say you get enough for one good soup one good soup that could feed everyone if they wanted okay cool all right so now so, yeah you've right. got you've got your you've got your mushrooms and you've licked the wall uh let's start with since we're top of the order tempest what do you want to do at this point the battle's over I think I'm gonna walk like to the middle of the room of the of the cavern and I'm just gonna yeah. just look around and I'm like and and then I'm gonna I'm gonna look directly at Selenar and I'm gonna say your sister sent me to help you guys look at those two they're barely hanging there's chunks of flesh like oh god I can't believe she Ugh. 
and then I know. Uh, it's good. I know, but they actually serve a useful purpose overall. Trust are, me. Are you sure? Because <laughs> no, I'm really I'm not. Licking the wall. Uh, yeah, look at that one. He's licking the wall. <laughs> it's. A... What, I... what did I get myself into? I, I don't. It's I, not, I don't know. It's, it's not too late to turn around. It's too late for me. It's not too late for you. Unfortunately, I think it's a little too late for me. I owe your sisters, so... I would like to, th I would like to think that not everyone has ears in this room. Eleanor's not trying to be quiet at all. Oh, and neither is Tempest. <laughs> Tempest doesn't care. <laughs> she's just like... She's just like, you guys seem useless as hell. <laughs> so... Well... I would like to think that everyone has ears in this room, <laughs> as... Did did you uh did you mute mute yourself just now, Yuri? But yourself halfway, insulted, Yuri. But she's going to refrain from resorting to violence. I mean, if you want, honey, we can we can we can we just finished the battle, so. No. It's, no. Okay. My phone is just going wonky. I promise. All right. So Tempest, that was you're no. just kind of. I don't think I'm gonna waste a smite on oh, you. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't really think it's worth you have to, but you have to waste the smite on me. You're you're hilarious. You know that. <laughs> one, you're funny. one thing I one thing I will say about them is they may not be very good against small enemies, but you should see them when they gang up on something much larger than themselves. They prove themselves to be the quite useful. You, but it's not worth it. Have to catch me first. Uh, I think I might hit you with something a little too hard for you. I'm just saying. But since Selenar here says you guys appear to be useless, uh, useful, I guess. I guess I have to take his word for Put it. Words in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, though, I I look over at Jimmy and Yori and see the horrible damage that they have sustained. Let me shake my head a bit. I yeah. told you all we should rest for a while. The bear took everything I had to keep it away from you long enough for you to get in and explore. I have no way to heal you right now. Time to go back up and rest, I think. We need wizards with spells. We need clerics with spells. Yeah, if we if we back up just to the last chamber, we can we can take a rest and uh and you know, regain our spells and hit points, and that. Well, I don't say hit points. <laughs> our health, just so. Uh, I'll be able to heal to you. That. I'd be able to heal you tomorrow, but unfortunately, I think those wounds are going to scar because they have sat for so long. I've got tons of scars. I saw the chat, Barrettel. Selenar cast inflict wounds. <laughs> Dude, that would be so. I was looking at that. I was looking at that too. I didn't want to say anything. I was like, just, that would have been so crazy. If you die. Here, I'll <laughs> heal you. 80, 10, 10, or whatever it is. Cutter's going to walk up to uh, Yuri. He's going to kind of look her up and down, say, Does it hurt? No, not at all. She clearly just doesn't. She loves pain. So she clearly is just she's just loving all of this. She's just really just smiling at this point. We lose Yuri. She may she she may be bleeding, but she will do anything at all costs to just enjoy this pain. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can yeah, hear you. Yeah, we hear you. <laughs> can everyone hear me? My yeah, can hear you. Uh, you, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah we hear you. Hear we got you. Yeah, just checking. And, and, so, and you catch yeah. me just rubbing rubbing a piece of the uh, some of the okay. mushroom stuff right into the wound, right into the, <laughs> the open wound so, on my cheek. Yeah, she, she enjoys this pain, but she clearly doesn't think that the rest of the what it it's it's numbing. Uh... <laughs> And uh, so our... as that is happening, as Cutter is talking to me, I'm going to use my lay on hands. 
Yeah, what, what was Cutter doing again, too? Cause... And I'm going to heal myself for 10 HP. Okay. Well, were you guys able to hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. We can hear you, Cutter. I was just saying, what was Cutter saying? Because you were saying something earlier? Yeah, he was saying he was getting into it. I was, and I'm glow magically. I was trying to taunt oh, Yuri, but I don't know if you guys even heard me. Uh, I didn't hear the taunt. What was the taunt? Or Go ahead, make fun of her again. Yuri. Yeah, no, I, we didn't hear that. Okay, so he walks up to Yuri and he looks her up and down and says, Does it hurt? Oh, does it hurt? Oh, making fun of her pain. Yuri, Cutter's ripping into you because you look like a chump. Oh, we might have lost Yuri again. Well, stream, for the new people joining us in the stream, Yuri is like our... the one that we, we lose her sometimes. You know, so... We'll just have to... hold off. Yuri! Yeah! Are you there? That's just one thing I will she say. Is is that was, I was not sure what... I was not sure what use you would be in a group like this, but... After seeing the spells Hello? that you've cast around here, I have now we can hear you, Yuri. Oh yep, Yuri. Hello. Yep. And, and seeing the spells that you cast, I can see that you will definitely be a boon to this group. And Yuri Cutter Cutter made funny Cutter Cutter made funny you asked if your wounds hurt, by the way. You're very low, Yuri. It sounds like she cannot hear us. Yeah. Can hear her. And she's trying to talk to somebody else. I would think so. Well, I wasn't able to hear. Can you hear us now? Hello. Hello. Nope. She she can't hear us. She's asking. I don't think she can hear us. Say I I I if you can hear us. Nope. Yeah yeah, Cthulhu Patak. <laughs> okay, well, we'll we'll let Yuri just hang out for a few minutes because it's not a battle right now anyway. Until she can get back, I'll type in chat that we can't hear. Hold on. Um, in the Yuri, Yuri, you can't hear us. Hello. There you are. <laughs> okay, so um. Cutter had made fun of Yuri, but Yuri apparently can't hear Cutter's cutting remark. Ooh, cutting from Cutter. Oh, that's good. Ooh. I didn't even mean to do that. All right. No. <laughs> that, was, that was bad, I know. Bad pun. Bad, 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 Tony. Bad. Can everyone hear me now? We can hear you, but you, you can't hear us. I can hear you. I, it's just oh, my phone is overheating. So, yay. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Well, well, yeah, Yuri, what happened was Cutter was just making fun of you and calling you a chump because you have so many wounds. Yes, as, as I'm doing, as he's making fun of me, I'm going to use my lay on hands just as a casual thing because I, I don't really use it. It's really as an emergency thing. So I'm just going to use it casually and say, no, it doesn't really hurt. I actually enjoy pain, but thank you for asking. And she's going to just shrug it off as she really just she's going to shrug off uh cutters like trying to make fun of me because she really doesn't care <laughs> all right so you just basically don't even care about cutter just he's ripping into you just like huh yeah whatever i'm cool on that's more you need me unless you need to enjoy hurting things but you just haven't found but some people actually enjoy pain <laughs> All right. That's the fun part. I don't want this. We're Fifty Shades of D and D here. Drew. We're getting the Fifty Shades of D and D. Okay. All right. Now, calm it down. Read it back in. Read it back Are we in. To fade to black here. Fail. Oh, read, read it back in. Read it back in. Okay. So. I will say, I will say, the, however, the safe word. You know. The safe. The safe word is demilich. No banana. Safe word is banana. <laughs> <laughs> Same with banana. <laughs> oh my god. All right. So we got that. So at this point now, y'all have kind of hung out. You, you've done, is there anything you want to do? Because it just looks, what you're seeing now, now that the bats are gone, it's pretty much, it looks like the cavern is just a, it's an empty cavern now, aside from the dirt and the grime and the smell. Um, Jimmy, you were looking at some walls before, but then you decided to lick some walls. Um, those walls that you're looking on the east side of the room, go ahead and roll me an investigation check. 
do that. My investigation is, has a 2 modifier, and that is 19. Okay. You know, you start feeling around the walls, you know, everybody's watching you because, you know, and they're really impressed. They can tell that, you know, as a, a Dugar dwarf, this is like, you know, your bread and butter. You know, you live within stone underground, yeah. so you might as well be in your house, you know, just cleaning and setting up things. But you can tell, you know, after really examining it, there's nothing here. This is just solid stone all the way through. Right. On, the east, on the east side. What do you want to do at this point? Any, uh, now that Jimmy's done that, anybody else want to do anything? Real quick, does anybody want to do anything now that he's checked that wall? Or do you all want to just, uh, I, I, you know. Tony, I think we wanted to go back to the bear cave and rest, and then we can come back and look for secret doors. Gotcha. Is that everybody in agreement? We're going to rest then? Yes. I am in agreement, yeah. We need some okay. healing. We need to, I, I need to regrow my chi. Well, this is yeah. technically you're in the cave. Like this is just the deeper part. So we'll just say that you're you're resting in here. I don't want I don't want a whole bunch of night dwarves coming up and and eating our throats. Or anything. You have the DM's assurance that if you rest okay. here in the cavern, you will be okay. All I right. will give you that Trust assurance. That. I'm like we rest. This wall is safe. Why don't we just rest here? against this safe wall. Mm. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so is it, I guess it's a long rest, right? Yeah. We need our wizards to get their spells back into the wall. Clerics. So let me just reset my hit points. Sorcery, do I get all of my spell slots back on a long rest? Yep. At the end of a long rest, yes. At the end of a long rest, yeah, that's right. Oh, you put out like a little bedroll and everything. Oh, yeah, there's a couple of them there. That's cute. All right, so you guys have got your your DM assurance, which is the first time that's ever happened in the whole time we played uh, stream. Is that usually I always do random encounters, but Jimmy was getting scared there, and I didn't want to hear. I didn't want to drink his D and D tears tonight, so <laughs> I uh, decided to be oh spread my godly mercy. Uh, so yes, you're you've all got your full rest. You've got your spells back. I guess everybody would be healed up at this point. How much is DM insurance? It is very, very expensive. We ain't Geico, and we sure as hell ain't progressive. Gold <laughs> coins, man. Or wait, wait. I'll say, wait. What we should do? Y'all want? Wait. I just thought about something. We could do a little joke where every time, like, you have a rest, if somebody does a cheer, even just like a hundred dollar cheer, it's like DM insurance. If they if they cheer you, y'all don't get random encounters or something when you rest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you've rested, you got your little rest here. What do y'all want to do at this point? I'm gonna go down the list. I'm actually gonna start with Tempest. Tempest is there, now that you've woke up. Um, do you want to say anything to anybody, or is there anything you want to do? Um. No, I think I will just look around the cave and see if I just look around, just to see what I see. Yeah, I'm just... gonna help out. With, I'm gonna help out with that too. Okay, which direction are y'all going to look at? Because basically, you've seen the cave. There's just the like kind just of this walls. Room though, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you've got the eastern. You you already examined the eastern wall, and yeah. you've got the northern wall, which is obviously right there. Where you see my green pointer, and then you've got the uh, western wall where Cutter was over here. Man, I'm shaking a lot from those cookies. All right, <laughs> Just shaking like a leaf. Um, I would, I would suggest, uh, and this is up to Tempest because I'm helping her out. 
Um, but I would suggest the north wall just because, uh, you know, it's not a it's not a hallway. It's maybe something that has like a secret or a trap or something. Ooh, a secret. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, let's do it. Okay. So we, can, uh, we can investigate that. Yuri, what do you want to do? If your phone is working right now. Maybe it's the... No. Oh, yep. there you are. There you go, Yuri. Sorry, I am currently working. I'm currently trying to fix Discord on the computer. Um, I very much, I mean, after the long run, I kind of want to go back into the cave and okay. see what else kind of there is. All right, so you're just looking around then with everybody else? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, no problem. Lucius, I already know what he's going to do. That's our missing player. He's going to sit there quietly. <laughs> so, reading his book. Yep, Selenar. What does Selenar want to do? Selenar Talk shit to space. Sort of sitting, sitting against the wall, watching the group cause their own levels of chaos. Okay. Selenar's being very quiet. Gotcha. No problem. Next, uh, do, 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 do. and Jimmy, I know what you're doing, so go ahead. I actually go to Cutter. Let's see, Cutter, real quick. Cutter, what do you want to do? Yeah. So you know those walls that I was approaching before we got attacked. I like to search for secret doors along that area. In the eastern wall? You got it. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Cutter, and give me an investigation check then. Okay. I'm not good at that. Here we go. It's not bad. It's a good roll, though. Alright, so, you know, you're over there. Now, you're not as good as Jimmy. I mean, Jimmy was able, like, it was like masterful watching the Dugar, you know, touch stone and the way he was looking around so quickly and so intricately. But you know, you do, you know, you do a thorough job. You know, you're able to look around. You know, you're a barbarian. You've been raised outside in the wilderness, so you have a pretty good eye for when things are off. But you don't notice anything. You don't see anything about this side of the room, the eastern side, that that has any type of openings or any levers or anything of that kind that would suggest there's an exit out of this place on on the eastern side of the room. And now, Jimmy, you wanted to check the northern side. Yeah, All right. Yeah. I, I was I was actually just aiding uh, Tempest. Yeah, you and Tempest. Mechanically, I'm, I'm aiding, so uh, she can she can roll that. Uh, yeah, we'll give her advantage then. Yep, because your Durgar helping you find stone is pretty damn good. All right, so you rolled a 17. Um, after a few moments. You're see, you know, you're hearing, you hear something from the other side of the, the wall in front of you. At first, you don't hear anything, space, but then after a few seconds, you, you, you hear like a, a, like the wind, like whistling through a crack. And as you take your hands and you go, you're able to feel just a little feel of a wind. And it's amazing because, you know, you wouldn't even able be able to normally to see it. Uh, let me read description here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. The reason no. One in Dagger Falls can confirm the existence of these dwarven dwellings underneath Eagle's Ivory is because they are so well hidden. The dwarves were apparently, as you're seeing now, were able to carefully camouflage this tunnel. So finding the entrance took you some time, but you did find it. And as you push on the wall, you see it slide open like this. And you now have found a secret entrance, and it looks like ahead of you, I need a second. Now you're gonna have to give me about four minutes because I have to take this top part off and put you all in the lower part because we're starting in the actual place now. So give me like five minutes stream oh, just yeah, to move thanks. these things off. Ugh. Yeah, cool. And, and so this is like the second level of your, of your setup here. Yes, yes, the I second guess. level. That's cool. This was suggested uh, that by was the like good team. Unexpected. I didn't think we would find anything in like the first first room of the dungeon. You weren't in the dungeon. Uh, yeah, I know. I thought we were. <laughs> nope. No dungeon for you. It was like we got past a trap. So I was like, okay, now we're in the dungeon. <laughs> nope. We'll just say here. This comes off. Now, don't you look at that table until I have it all pretty for y'all. 
Close my eyes. Closing, closing my eyes. Ch yeah, really Ch camera angle. Change the camera angle. I want them to be. I want it to be pretty when you first see it, with all the lights turned on and all nice for you guys. Plus, I have to put some things down on the ground. So just don't look at it for a moment while I put all this yeah, in no here. Yeah, I'm sure you will, Jimmy. I mean, you're gonna be looking right at it. <laughs> no honor, sir. No honor, sir. Mute this mic. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, there were a bunch of uh, uh, apostrophes. unnecessary apostrophes. <laughs> yeah, like any good fantasy god. Yep. Put it, just put as much punctuation as you can into your fantasy gods' names, and then they become convinced. So, space. How long do you think it's going to be until we get horribly murdered by either one of our own party members or by the DM? Two more sessions. Two more sessions. Yuri's got something planned. Two more sessions. Two more sessions. Watch it be like the two more sessions. Watch it be in the middle of like, like session twelve, where we're like hit smack dab in the middle of the dungeon doing something super ridiculous. <laughs> Sounds about right. And that's when yeah. Lucius comes back and destroys us all. Just I do. For, I for do have a. I do have a little bit of insurance, only because Tony is terrified that I will take revenge on his character, even though I don't operate that way. <laughs> I am not a he's bad lying. Man, even he, though he I does. do bad things. No, he's lying. He does. He operates. <laughs> he's lying. He's cruel and sadistic. Don't let him lie to you. I'm not cruel and sadistic. I am just fair and uncaring. Oh, uh, well, yeah. okay. I guess that. All right, so let's put you in here. Keep on Put that marker for you. You're probably seeing my butt on the stream. Oh man, that's gonna get some subs. Like the ass of a 44 year old man to make people want to watch. Well, right? Tony, if if you really want, since you do have a TikTok now, you could start twerking in your DM's outfit for your first video. Oh yeah, I'm Perfect. sure. I'd, yes. I'm sure everybody wanted to watch that. Oh yeah, you... guarantee it. Tony, Tony, that wasn't a joke. I'm being dead serious. Oh yeah, because <laughs> um, that, 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 like, start now. Le legit, there is so much call for random dorky thirst trap DM guys on TikTok. You would have people dying, and you would gain a following very quickly. Hmm. Money, money, with, money, money. With my God <laughs> dancing every single with, episode. With my guidance, one of my friends now has over 20,000 followers with a little bit of help from me. Trust me, nobody wants to watch me dance. You already see what I did to the stream. They just got PTSD from what they had to see tonight. I didn't. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, you must be sick and sadistic then. Welcome. Yeah, you're, you're one of us. Right? <laughs> <No> <laughs> you're one of us. <laughs> you're one of us. Oh, up the camera angle. Hold, we gotta fix that camera angle. Hold on, fixing it now. We're zoomed in on one pillar. That's all we yeah, see. Yeah, no, that pillar is beautifully detailed. The, the rest of the dungeon is going to be viewed through the eyes of a single piece of fungus. Don't leave it. What? Leave it. All right, Lonnie's gonna get it. It should probably be inside that room to the front Ooh, line to give a good shot. Orb. That to give cool, a. Yeah. That's not ominous at all. I poke it. Hey, Jimmy. Lick it. Oh, okay, yeah, lick. no, totally. That's what I'll do. See if it's sweet. I can uh, sweeten up my next meal a bit. Because all they can see is a pillar on the stream right now. Yeah. 
Oh no, it, uh, it's backed up now. Uh, now we can see one, two, three, four, five, six bows and a, uh, an orb <laughs> that is glowing different colors. Well, let me reconnect to the chat because I'm still seeing that old picture. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. All right, so now you've got a, a good view um, of what's going on. Uh, let me see if we can get a... Can you zoom out, JC, so we can get a view of them? Because they're behind this door over here. Possible like to do it. Up and to the right? Yeah, you'd be to the south, if you can see the compass token. To the south of that statue, which would be towards that door. That right hand top. I cannot read it, though. Um, let me move the token. Uh, um... Put it in front of the door, make it a little bit easier. And if we can get that camera change, I think he's going to adjust it in a second. Still can't read it, really. But I feel like that's just because the camera's a little bit far away from the... from where it is. Yeah, it is. Let me wait for you just a bit. All right. Can you, can you okay, good. There the, you go. There you, you go. Like That's the, perfect. Uh, the green uh, dots towards north. Absolutely. Uh, on, on the uh, on the compass. You got it. The green north would be this way. Oh, cool. Nice. Okay. And then west would yep. be this way. East, this way. All right. And of course, south obviously is where y'all are approaching from. All right. So y'all see yourselves behind the door at this point. Uh, you just opened the, the secret passage. Now you see this door in front of you. Uh, there does seem to be a little bit of stone. Um, give me who's in front. Was it uh, either part? Tempest or I? Yeah, Tempest or Jimmy. Who's going to be in? Who's walking first? Jimmy, of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll go Okay, so Jimmy, go ahead and give me a uh, perception check real quick. Perception, yeah, no problem. I've got a plus three on that, that's with proficiency, and that is a 17. Alright, did you notice coming as you're, you know, right before, you know, this area in front of you, it seems to be like a little bit of like a like sand, like little dust, little particle of dust, just seems to fall from the ceiling a little bit as you go forward. Yeah, they really like that Dutch I angle, by the way, up. JC. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just had to check his exiles in the chat. The All right, um, so you walk forward a little bit more. Uh, I'm definitely uh, when I notice this uh, this sort of uh, sand falling onto me, mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna look at the ceiling. Okay. Um, from where you see, it just looks like, you know, you can look up, obviously your, your vision is good. This ceiling itself, because you're still kind of like in a, a corridor area before this yeah. door that you see in front of you. So the ceiling isn't too high. It just looks like a lot, lot of stone. The stone looks very old. Some of it looks chipped and broken. You see where soil is actually coming through at the stone in some cracks, and maybe that's what's causing the little bit of uh, sand to, to come down from the ceiling. Right. Uh, do I recognize... Uh, this kind of masonry, is this dwarven? Well, you can definitely tell from, but you know what? You, you're dwarf, so yeah. Yeah, you definitely recognize that after you've, that secret door and then everything past that point now is of dwarven make. You can tell it's been carved, but it's obviously very, very old uh, and looks like, you know, it's not in the best condition from where you're standing now, just in this corridor. You know, you've got right. wet, you've got water kind of dripping in from above, you've got that little bit of sand that was falling, it smells, it's nasty. On your feet, you, you're walking through like the actually algae and mo uh, mold itself that's growing within here. So it's not pleasant, it's not at all. All right, uh, I'm going to move forward uh, carefully um, and uh, looking out for any traps or Room. Okay, I'm gonna move this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this door out the way a little bit so you can see a little bit better okay. here. All right, as you walk forward, um, since you didn't chose to throw anything or poke anything, you st give me a roll. 
Uh, 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 hold on one second. Give me I mean, a. I, like I, I said, I was looking out for traps. And, yeah. Well, this this isn't exactly what what you think. Give me a dex okay. roll. A You'll dex. understand in a second. Yeah. Is this is this a save? Yeah, it's it's, just, it's avoid something. Okay, so roll. it sounds like a save. Yeah, roll higher than ten for me. I have a, a dexterity proficiency, so that's a four uh, modifier. So I've got a seventeen again. Okay. As you walk forward, I don't know if the stream can see it, so I'm going to put you on a pressure-plated thing here. Oh, nope. Didn't work. I have pressure-plated traps, and they're, they're not working. <laughs> well, Ooh, no. the thing is, the stone falls off. You see the stone tries to hit Jimmy. Jimmy is able to just get out the way as the wall begins to crumble. He makes sure it through, and he's able to just get into the front of the door and dodge the falling rock. But now, of course, it's it's rough terrain all yeah. walking through there. So going across in that one little spot will cost you two movement points instead of one. Right. So there is still a door here. I'm just taking it out so you can see, but all the stone yeah. fell down. The door it's all crumbled. That's right. Door is still closed. So that happens there's this big sound of all these stones yep. falling and i just barely jump out of the way and i look back and i say be careful there's a trap there it wasn't a trap <laughs> it wasn't a trap it was a trap for, for the dm's perspective but it wasn't a trap for the party it was right. just crumbling rock um and then uh and then i i put my ear to the door in front of me and see if i can Okay, go ahead and give me a uh, perception check, please. Perception? Uh, oh, yeah, that's a plus three. You just broke up, Jimmy. That, that is a uh, 19. All right. You know, you put your ear to the, uh, the door. You really don't hear anything other than the slight sound of the, the whistling of, you know, maybe the old wind and air, the stagnant air that's still moving around inside the... Um, on the other side, but that's really, you don't really hear anything. Right. Um, after I don't hear anything, I assume that, uh, are they all clustered behind me like that? Like yes, the they're they still clustered, yep, they're still in the corridor. Yeah. Just coming, you just uh, came through the, the secret I'm door. Gonna, I'm gonna back up from the door and I'm gonna say, I don't, I don't hear anything from the other side. Maybe someone uh, who is uh, better at, uh, at combat than I am has proved in the the last combat uh, can open the door and uh, see if there's really anything out on the other side. I'll walk up. Who has the big balls? Who said that? Cutter? That was Cutter. I should have known. I should have known. <laughs> and I will check to see if I can just open the door. All right. Yeah, the door, ha it. door has no lock. It swings right open easy as pie now i'll put the door back since it's now open so you you're right there do you want to step through the doorway or are you just going to stand here at the front with jimmy let me move this out the way here uh, actually tony uh-huh as cutter does that yes i try to catch uh uh tempest's eye mm -hmm. sort of catch her attention and with a simple, with a simple word under my breath, I cast thaumaturgy. Mm -hmm. And one of the abilities of thaumaturgy, with a range of up to thirty feet, is you instantaneously cause an unlocked door or window to fly open or slam shut. So Cutter pushes the door open, goes to step forward. I'm going to cast thaumaturgy to have it slam right in his face. <laughs> He's just <laughs> before he steps through. <laughs> I thought you were going to do some crazy combat and someone would try some like attack or something. I was like, what is he doing here? <laughs> okay. So you just <laughs> want to be mean and generally general cruelty and, and, and malignment. Okay. All right. So you heard him, Cutter. Uh, as you try to step through, the door smacks you right in the face. And it's an, a hard smack, though. Cutter actually, it breaks his nose. Actually, no, let's roll to see if it breaks Cutter's nose. Let's roll. He's hey. actually trying to time it to where it would just slam right before he walked through. Oh, but if you oh. want to roll that no, it no, is, no. that's fine. No, if you were doing it that way, then I'm no, not actually trying work. to cause damage to the party. No, no, no. It wouldn't have been damage. It would have been purely, you know, visual. 
RP. <laughs> that would have been no hit points. All right, all right. So the door slams shut, and uh, you you know you know that Selenar kind of did it, but obviously it didn't hit you or anything. But the door just slams shut right as you tried to. Okay. He turns back to Selenar and he kind of goes, and then he then he'll turn again and he'll open it, looking both into the room and then back back at Selenar and he'll step in. All right. So you step into the room. All right. And let me describe what you see here. If you want to zoom out now, JC, so the, the stream can get a good view because they'd be able to see this room so they can see what I'm describing as well. That would be great. I don't know if you're still back there if you left for a second. All right. Dozens of archesses and flying buttresses shore up the ceiling of this enormous cavern 25 feet above lit by diffused light from three glowing bright blue orbs on three great central pillars the fourth central pillar is dark the circular chamber is decorated with a, a base relief border depicting bearded dwarven legions fighting hordes of orcs and trolls the areas under the arches have been carved into niches fire pits and areas separated by low stone walls perhaps tapestries or curtains once hung before them there are six exits leading out of the room including that from the secret passage where you entered large pillars stand before two of the passageways and st a statue of a dwarven warrior stands in the center of the, the room two other passageways are undecorated a set of rusty iron double doors indicates the south exit or, or the sixth exit which would be the north exit i um i'm going as i yes, as sir. i take in this room just at a glance uh my eyes cross over the, the dwarven warrior. I wonder if uh, I know uh, the history of this warrior um, or who it is. You heard me, right? We heard you. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. I was muted. No, I did not hear you. <laughs> what, what was your role? What was your role? Uh, I I was uh, asking if I knew uh, who this this dwarven warrior statue. Oh, was. yes, if I was muted. Know uh, the uh, history, if I know who they are. Yeah, I said do a history check for me. I'm sorry. I was oh, right. muted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, so I'm this muted. Is, this is a uh, this is just literally a history check on masonry, um, which gives me advantage. Well, well. Uh, because I, I have say, stone cutting. I, I know, but this isn't stone cutting. This is a statue. You're asking for the history of a person, not of architecture. So I'd say there's no advantage on this one. I'd say it's a normal history check station. Now, if you were asking how the stone was carved and how they made the statue, that'd be different. But if you're asking about the person itself, then that would just be a normal history check, I would think, to see if you recognize the person. If the, if the stream disagrees or if the you know chat disagrees, let me know. But that would be my take on the ruling. I feel like... The, uh, and feel free to disagree with me, that uh, dwarven history is so woven into architecture that it's the same thing. Hmm. Right, Ranger that Harley. History, that history and um, how architecture is built is basically the same thing. Okay, Exile, do you agree? Okay, Ranger Harley agree with me. And then Exile, are you agreeing with uh, Jimmy or me? Um, just just for the record stone cutting is whenever you make a history check related to the origin of stonework you're considered proficient in the history skill so it's the origin of the work who made it or what it was made for so technically if it's a full stone statue i would say you get it well but that's what it reads and yeah by that definition when you're saying that who the origin who made it okay well if that's the case then all right we'll do that um, go ahead and roll that then the history with advantage since we got that you were argued in your favor <laughs> No, that, that that definition made sense if it's origin then yes Not just architecture and my history is actually a zero uh, 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 Modifier and that gives me seven 
Okay. <laughs> well, but, all uh, that discussion for uh, seven. All Jimmy, that don't discussion. To, don't forget to double your proficiency bonus in the check. So add an additional plus two. Oh, that would be a nine then. Still, still not. All right, you don't really, you know, you look at the statue and you can tell it's a dwarven make. Um, but for this time, you know, maybe it's because this place is old or whatever the case may be. Uh, but you know, you're, you're looking at the statue from across the room. You really haven't gotten close up on her or anything like that. You're still 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, about 35 feet from the statue. So, you know, you're not getting perfect, you know, clarity and everything. So right. you really can't tell anything at this point. So embarrassing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't know about stone? I, I, don't, I don't know how to be quiet around bats. I don't know who this dwarven <laughs> stone warrior is. I maybe if you had a ranger <laughs> helping you. Range, somebody just said maybe if you had a ranger helping you in the <laughs> chat. <laughs> you need a ranger. I love rangers. rangers. Nobody ever plays rangers. I love rangers. All right, so um, that's because that. they don't work well in 5e. Yeah, probably that's what it is. All right, um... So Cutter, you, you've gone in the room, you've looked, is there anything else you want to do? You're just stand there. Jimmy, let's see who else. Yuri, uh, who's next in line? What do you want to do at this point? Did we lose Yuri again? Uh, we might have, yeah. <laughs> we are always losing Yuri. I swear, chat, what we're going to do, we're going to invest money, and we're going to buy Yuri a setup where she can never get dropped. Yeah. We got to hook her up, man. All right. Um, well, we'll just ask. How about space? What do you want to do, space? I think I'm going to walk into the room next to Cutter and look around. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So that's all your movement points pretty much puts you right at the spot with Cutter in the front. Now around this room at this point, both you and Cutter can see all these old skeletons and you know, it looks like just bones and rotting flesh on just old, old carcasses of the uh, of dead. It looks like a great battle had occurred in this hall at one time. Hello? Everybody hear that? Yeah. We, I heard okay. You. Okay, guys, just want to make sure everybody. All right, so next then, since you went, uh, Jimmy, are you going to move into the room or are you just going to hang out there? Uh, no, I'm letting the, um, the uh, tougher skinned uh, friends go first. Gotcha. All right. How about you, um, Selenar? What do you want to do, bud? Selenar will walk into the room, sort of taking a look around. Um, because my brain is soup today, um, the bodies that are laying on the ground, could you describe them again for me? They look like piles of bones. Some have swords next to them, some have bows. Then uh, other bodies are just rotting flesh. It looks like they've been decomposing for a very, very long time. It looks like, what, like at one time there was a great battle here within this room, uh, but it, whatever occurred, it was a, a while back. Well, that being said, piles of bones with swords next to them, rotting bodies, all of that, Selenar is just going to take a deep breath. They're going to close their eyes and wrap their hands around their holy symbol. And after a moment, they're going to look up and their eyes are going to be pools of inky black as they use their ability, Eyes of the Grave. Okay. And what does that as do? As an action... You can open your awareness to magically detect undead. Until the end of your next turn, you know the location of any undead creature within 60 feet of you that isn't behind total cover and that isn't protected from divination magic. It doesn't tell you anything about a creature's capabilities or identities. It just tells so you I, if there's if, undead? If there is undead here, 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 or where undead are, if there's any undead. But it wouldn't tell me if there's zombies or skeletons or whites or vampires, etc. Okay. Just radar. Okay. Yeah. As you, Selenar steps in. Now all three of you are into the room. You know you, you know as you step in, you kind of like crack. There's a stone on the wall, a stone on the ground, and you kick it, and it goes across the room. It doesn't seem like a big deal. And then you cast your your spell, right? And at that moment, it's everywhere. Undead. And at that moment, 
<laughs> Zombies, skeletons, all, they all begin to stand up and they're beginning to walk towards you at this moment. Um, let's roll this. Let's roll. Since there's no surprise, since Selenar, the, oh, by the way, for the good group, they made the crazy mistake of poking these things with the stick. <laughs> they did. They didn't turn out as well for them. Selenar must have watched the stream. But I love you anyway. <laughs> so. Piles of bones and bodies that are apparently. Yeah, that was that was stressful. Yeah, that was... body, if bodies have been de decomposing for years, some of them are piles <laughs> of skeletons. Some of them are still fleshy. There's something wrong with that. Yeah, it's it's good that you picked up on that. The other team didn't. Uh, it's so. Flesh. Yeah, the other team didn't pick up on that. So the skeleton. Uh, uh, and they're coming towards you. This one is right stood up right in front of you, Selenar. And this one, it takes one step. Or actually, actually, we'll just roll for initiative because they just stood up right in front of you at this point. And since there was no surprise, since Selenar um, smartly did, I would have did the same thing. That'd be honest, Selenar. I would have known something was wrong too. I'm like, dude, flesh on something from ruins from hundreds of years ago? No, we're getting no, no, no. This ain't right. This ain't right. So let's roll for initiative on these skeletons. Yes. We should all these... roll initiative, right? Yep. Everybody has to roll initiative. Skeletons and zombies. Unless there's some people in the back decide they don't feel like fighting. <laughs> no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight. I'm just gonna I'm get out of here. Using my tiger's eye d20. Uh, this time, hopefully, uh, this one will roll high, and that's 12. That was a natural 20 for my initiative. Thank God. Very good. I rolled a 19 for this, for each skeleton. I rolled a 19, too. And gotcha. space, because your initiative is point fifteen, you're actually going to go ahead of the skeletons because they're point fourteen. Thank God. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> yeah, one good thing about the initiative tracker that's in roll twenty, it actually, um, it favors the players over the monsters when there's a similar roll. That's why it uses the decimal point, so it can actually track the initiative properly. Okay. Yeah. I'm just. <laughs> Wait a minute, where's the other one? Oh, I knew there was another one. It was laying over here. There she goes. It's supposed to be. Okay. That's better. That's better. Am I doing another one of those? No. One. Sorry, I just have to make sure we got everything ready to kill all y'all if possible here. <laughs> yeah. One, two, three. Okay. All right. All right, so let's roll for the zombies here. Give me a second. Can Zombie. anyone hear me? Yep, we can now hear we you can. now. I can hear you now. Thank God. Okay, my phone is overheating, so we... Please do not mind me. Oh no. He's disconnecting, I guess. Zombies got a 10. All right. And now, let's go. Jimmy, what's your number? What'd you roll? Uh, 12. Okay. Cutter, what you at? Uh, 16. Mm. All right. Tempest, what you got? 19. Oh, that's right, you got the 19, okay. Yuri, what you got? Oh, no, please don't disconnect anymore. It'll be a big battle, Yuri. Stay connected. <laughs> oh boy. We can't hear you, Yuri. Can't hear you, Yuri. Thirteen. 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 Okay, thirteen. We got you. All right, Lucius. What did you get? Hello. Lucius got a fourteen. Yeah, we heard you. 
Okay. And Selnar, what did you Hello? get? Yeah, we hear you. Twenty hear. natural. We hear someone type that we hear, so she knows that we hear. Alright, so Rich is gonna be at the top of the top of the top of the top of the heap. And then it is after that Tempest. And my skellies. Uh, just give me a second here stream I'm just getting all this this is a big battle so I don't even know if we're gonna be able to finish this might have to hold it off. might not be as big as you think because you better be ready to roll what one two three four five six seven eight yeah, nine that's right you got nine clerics. wisdom saves you got cleric gonna, that's right I'm gonna legolas this whole room and all of the skeletons are going down with an arrow in their skulls well the last group didn't have a cleric um the good team not have a cleric and that made this battle take three hours what three hours almost three it was intense it was intense trust me they were a lot of a few of them went down it was it was nuts it was nuts we are impervious to dying mm-hmm okay <laughs> that's on our side okay you say so I, I do. I mean, I'm pretty confident, anyways. Okay. Well, you never know. Maybe. <laughs> All right. So, Selenar would be up first with his natural 20. So, he's going to cast, I already know. Well, they are going to move forward 10 they, feet. They, so they're within 30 feet of everyone. Damn it. i got to remember them. They. So, you move forward. 10 feet, keeping okay. me still within the range of that first zombie so I don't leave its range so it doesn't get an attack. Well, straight you, 10 feet straight forward so you'd be moving but but still gets a attack oh no because you're not moving out of its threat range okay correct it, so it, okay. If, if that zombie has the sentinel feet i am burning the stream <laughs> to the ground <laughs> it does right. you're dead burn all right so delinar um, grabs their holy symbol once more eyes glowing black as they did when they come on, used their eyes of the grave and all undead within 30 feet of me need to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay, let's do this, Selenar. Ready? Uh, I would say start with, like, going across the board as the camera is, left to right, as close to me, moving all the way down towards the statue, just for ease of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, 9. Alright, well, this will be Zombie 1. So, Zombie 1, Skeleton 1, Zombie 2, Skeleton 2, Zo uh, skeleton three, zombie three, zombie four, zombie five, skeleton four. Which is which? So let's just start going down the roll. Okay. First. Bunch of them, oh, yeah. Damn it! I hit the initiative button. <laughs> Sorry. Wisdom roll. Okay. Normal. First. Uh, first skeleton. Skeleton one. What do I need to roll? I, I, I imagine 14. that. Path. I imagine that passes. So that first skeleton right near you passes. All right, let's see if the first zombie right near you passes. Fail. That fails. So he's going to go running his ass off, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, let's go through all of them real quick because what happens is when they are turned... Uh, oh, I... do, do, do. Anyone that a you turn, I'm just going to lay down. must spend its turn trying to move as far away from you as possible and cannot move willingly within 30 feet of you. It cannot take reactions. All For right. its action, it can only take the dash action to try to escape. If there's nowhere to move, the creature can use the dodge action. All right. I will, um, anyone that you turn right now until this, this is over, the rolling, I'll just lay it down so we know the ones that failed. All that, right. That makes sense. All right. So next, another wisdom for the next skeleton in line. Which would be uh, this guy. Fail. Fail. Lay him down. Next zombie in line. Let's see what we got. Fail. Uh, oh, I, I thought it was 14. Oh, 14 is a 14. Okay. 
Okay, so fail. Very good. Very good. This battle is going to be a lot faster for y'all. All right. Next skeleton, which would be this one. How how many feet do they have to be close to you, by the way? Within 30 feet, which goes all the way out to that skeleton behind the dwarven statue. Right. Yes, it does. He is right at 30. Mm. Wait, wait, hold on. One, two... Three, four, five. Yep, he just kind of. Ah, oh, lets you have it. He just gets there. Okay. Uh, just so you know, Tony, diagonals do not count as double movement for spell effect. So oh, every okay. diagonal still counts as five feet for a spell effect. All right, so it gets that zombie over here too. Just gets that one too. One, yep. two, three, four, five. Okay. All right, so let's just keep going. This guy has to roll next, Skelly. Or did I already roll and that one failed? I think I already rolled and that one failed. That's right. That uh, was you, uh, so far, one skeleton has passed, one skeleton has failed, and two zombies have failed. Okay, so I am... This one I haven't ruled yet. Okay. There should be three laying down right now. And there is. Okay. Next one. Fail. Fail. Okay. <laughs> this is good. This is, I, knew, I, I, told, I knew this was going to happen because you had a cleric too. Uh, next one, next zombie, next zombie, this one right here. Fail. Failed. Damn. These and guys. remember, party. What them? They are only turned until they take damage. So if we are going to take them out, we take them out one at a time, focusing on the ones that are not turned yet. That's all I do. I just shoot things one at a time. Uh, I, I think a negative one succeeds. Yeah, I didn't even ask. <laughs> no need to ask. And now the last skelly. Fail. All right. So they all go down for this round. You you know you see it, Selena. Describe your moment. Describe it. Or do you you know the inky blackness that fills Selenar's eyes as they begin to chant. Just the waves of energy that come out of them when they hold their holy symbol up. That same that same darkness just bursts from the holy symbol casting a wave over each of the undead within the room all right i love pretending to be a zombie that's just fun all right all right so and that was my action and that was your action okay so anything else you're doing right now uh if you give me a moment To uh, <laughs> with that, I'm actually going to pull my mace out. Mm -hmm. After the spell is done, I'm going to drop my holy symbol, pull out my mace, and turn to face the one that is still standing, <laughs> stepping up to it. Okay, so you step up to this guy. All right, for battle. Go ahead. Go ahead and sock That's him. it. No, that's it. I don't get an attack. Okay, you just talk. Oh, that's right. You already did. That's just your book. All right, mm -hmm. so next is... <laughs> Look back at a Tempest. What were you saying about useful? Can you do that? Oh! oh. oh. Burn! Let's hurry up. This is better. Yeah, we can hear you a little we bit. We can hear you. Here. I think Tempest must Yay. be muted. Tempest must be yeah. muted because she lets you get away with that trash talk. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm gonna let him have it for now. Yeah. At All least right. he did something yeah. this time. So now Can it is. Go look at that? I love that. I love that Tempest was not there to watch me kite a fucking bear away from the rest of the party. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Which is why true, I had yeah. no spell slots left. So now it is Tempest's turn, though. So he did to all of the dead. Are all of these dead on the ground, or are they or are they just lying there? No, they're about we to. We have them all just. They're all just laying down to represent that they are turned. So on their turn, all they can do is run away yeah, until they take flee. damage. They they'll are horrified far, of the cleric. Yeah, they'll get as far away from it as they can until the spell expires or until the turn expires or whatever. But there are it a couple of one them minute. that are not that way. Oh, no, there's only one. One, okay. The okay. one that Eleanor's in front of. 
Okay, so I'm going to bonus action use my uh, tempestuous magic, and I'm going to cast chromatic orb at the one in front of Selenar. Dude, chromatic yeah, orb cool. kicks so much ass in fifth edition. You know that? <laughs> it's like it such really a does. badass spell. It All is right. such a great spell. Used to, in second edition, it's like, yeah, I ain't getting that. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, she rolled a 20, but not a crit 20. Damn. Uh, and I'm gonna, look at, <laughs> I'm gonna look at Oh Selenar no, that's her damage. Have... Yeah. Holy I'm... shit. <laughs> I'm gonna look at Selenar and I'm just gonna laugh. You were saying? All right, let's see if yeah, that takes it down. Damage it damages it. Yeah, it's vaporized, it's gone. <laughs> it just is gone. You didn't even get a chance to hit it, Selenar. <laughs> it just I keep it gone. from advancing. Yeah, it's gone. I look over my shoulder. I guess my sister does have good taste. She really does. <laughs> All right, so now it's the skeleton's turn. First one, he's just gonna stand up and jet. One, two, four, five, six. This guy's gonna stand up and jet. One, oh, two, three, Tony? four, five, six. Yes. Tony? Yes. Double that because they're dashing. Okay, well, they're only gonna get so far to the wall, so I'll put them here at the wall and this one kind of like goes over here I'm putting them really far away and, and then, I wonder if they, the, would be, uh, they would the be cowering in the corners oh don't make me stretch all the way across this damn table all right yeah this is I, carrying I'm just, I'm just wondering if these uh if these zombies who have been uh in this place for for eons uh are you know uh if the door is locked and they would they would probably know about that right <laughs> Are you asking me that? Yeah. I don't know. Would they? Who you don't knows? know? Uh, Who you, knows? I mean, I mean, I'm I'm trying to get them to escape through the rest of the dungeon. Oh yeah, that you, that's that's you. Yeah, come on. <laughs> you, <laughs> come on, you need zombies gonna be your guide. Come on. <laughs> I'm nice, but I ain't that nice. All right. So, um, the, oh yeah, this guy's running. This guy stands up, and since he was right next to you. Uh, now that you're here, uh, space, you actually get an att attack of opportunity as it tries to run away from you. Okay, I will uh, firebolt it. Dang, All right, yeah. firebolt up. All right, it hits, definitely hits, five damage. And of course, now that means it's not it's not turned, right, Sonar? Correct. Um, uh, yeah, correct. Oh, oh, that was actually a zombie, but still doesn't matter. Uh, on your turn, this one just will just say jets. So, five points of damage. I thought that was a skeleton. The zombies actually go after uh, y'all. My bad. So, we'll hold off on that, on that move. But you still are gonna, we'll still say you passed your attack opportunity. All right, next skeleton gets up. It jets, uh, uh, into over here into this corner there you go that looks like a scare and this zombie it gets up and it jets over here uh over there by the door you know i'm old because i say the word jet it's like just nobody says that anymore the jets man it's 1980s home slice all right <laughs> yeah you gotta be old remember that word home slice all right so they're all jetted out. The other one was vaporized by space, sent it to space. All right. And now, since all the skeletons have done their running and the zombies are going to run on their turn anyway, let's go ahead and it's Cutter's turn now. All right. So, um, why is Cutter knocked over? Yeah, I was, I, was, I was gonna mention, I'm not a zombie. you're clumsy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pick me back up. I got him. Alright, um... I would like to run over towards the buttress to the east, uh, and acrobatics and or athletics my way up to the top of the buttress. Like where this little statue is right here? Where the, okay. Yeah. So you want to be standing, we'll just put you right here. Okay. You go ahead, if you make it, that's where you'll be. Roll me a acrobatics check. 
get to the top of that buttress. Roll me more than 12. Here we go. What did you get? It's coming. Ooh, I said 12, you rolled an 11. Damn it. All right, well, <laughs> Cutter, Cutter, you know, he's usually badass, you know, but this time he's runs, he goes past Selenar. Selenar feels the wind against his back as Cutter moves with the deathly speed that only elves could do. He takes the first leap up, the, the, you know, the, the pillar of the, uh, the pillar of the, yeah, damn, I forgot the word what these are called, the buttresses. Okay. <laughs> he jumped the pillar of the buttresses and he jumps up and he's running up it, but then at the right at the top, he hits a loose stone from the age of all these ruins. The stone goes and a long goes with his foot. Cutter falls down and now he's prone against the ground right there as he's fallen. Uh, we'll say Cutter, it's, it was more than 10 feet. It was, 20, it was 25 feet to the ceiling. So you took, uh, what is that, for fall damage? Six. Six damage? 2d6. Two Roll a 2d6, Cutter. I'll let you decide your damage or decide your fate. <laughs> you mean? How kind of you, Tony? I'm a jerk. Cutter, I, I, I do still like you. Please don't be angry at me. <laughs> it's my choice to do something risky. All right, here we go. 2d6. Oh, that's not bad. Six. All right, so Cutter takes six, six points of damage. Yep, just six points. When I, when I land, I'm going to land kind of like when you do like break dancing to make it look like it was on purpose. <laughs> Where you kind of like, are you going to try to do that thing where people fall, but they like automatically kind of stand back up as they fall, like nothing happens? Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I plan the entire thing. All right. So Cutter is on the ground. He's prone. He fell off the top of that buttress. It is now Lucius's turn. The next closest one to everyone is the one that. Um, Tempest is about to hit, correct? Mm-hmm. It's just going to run on its turn. I already moved the zombies anyway, but none of them... Only that one got an attack of opportunity when it ran. So it doesn't really matter. I need to read something real quick. Give me a second, because I'm looking at all the spells. You got it. I'll take a sip of water. Uh... Yeah. I mean, mages are like that, right? You gotta do a lot of reading. I like yeah, being let's... able to fire arrows. We're going to cast Frostbite at it. Okay. So you gotta move. Lucius is up. One, two, three. Frostbite four, five. is a ranged spell of 60 feet, as long as he can see the creature. Ooh, he's right at the threshold of the door. Uh. You know what? This is perfect time for the pen. Because that laser pen you got me is ex exact straight line. So I can literally... Does the door open straight or does it open out to the wall? Ooh. Ooh. This is like a time where I could really be mean and say no. And you can't see past the door. Stream, should I let him see, like, should we say that the door goes all the way open? Or should I be truly cruel and say it goes just like you see on here, where he can't see around the door to hit the uh, zombie. What do you think, guys? Should I be cruel or mean? Because technically that door would be right in your way, because you can see it when I put the light on it. If it's, if it's open the way that it is, it absolutely would be in the way. Yeah, so no one's answering. If it opens so up all the way, it would not. Oh, you're messing with me. I don't even know what the hell that means. I just took cookies. The, uh, I said, due to the lizard door wall, the dungeon is an abstraction. Because remember when we first came into the cavern and there was a wall, but it was like a weird lizard door? Oh. Does that mean so, it has cover? Yeah, it's Cat, all he's abstraction. Asking, he's asking, oh, is just... the door fully open or is it only sticking out straight like it, like it's showing? Well, that's as far as the door would my, open. My argument is the door is open. And and you can see through it. Okay. Well. It's up to you, Tony. Right, we'll, 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 we'll let you take the shot on the zombie. We'll, we'll say you pushed it open. Uh, crack it open. And 
So I don't want to be that kind of DM. It's like, nah, 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 nah. I'll let you That's be awesome. that. That's for your because job. That being oh. said, Lucian got a natural 20 on the strike. No, I knew I shouldn't have did it. See, I, so opened, a... I just opened roll 20 to see what, what they rolled. I didn't want to see it and get upset before you made your decision. That's what happens when I trust Rich. See, I'm good cop. He's bad cop. Uh, <laughs> uh oh, right. wait, sorry. I'm sorry. Frostbite doesn't require a roll. It requires you to make a constitution save. Oh, okay. Ooh, that's not good because zombies have high con. That's a failure, so it's going to take five damage. All right. So and that... it has disadvantage on its next weapon attack roll it makes before the end of its next turn. So its next attack has disadvantage. Now hold on, let me put this down. Let me, let me put a wallop in on the, the zombie number three. It took five points, right? You said five? Five points of cold damage, and it has disadvantage on its next attack. Okay, we remember the disadvantage. I might not remember that going through all this. Um, so just don't let me, don't, don't forget to remind Somebody me. Somebody else remember that because I actually have to step away for a quick moment. All right. So. Thank Luke, you, Farisel. Thank you. Please look at the chat, Tony. Okay. Oh, I'm sure I'll let me turn to the chat now. <laughs> Rich is not a cop, good nor bad. Mean? Watch your mouth. <laughs> yeah, every, everyone's Stream. cameras are definitely uh, swapped Stream's around. Stream's got my back. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, oh, right everybody's back. everybody's cameras moved around to a different position. It is true. It's like different yeah. names. Rich just became Eric. Yeah, yeah for a second, ah. but it's back now. Okay. Well, all right. So now, since we've got that, it is Yuri's turn. And Yuri, you're back here if you can see your character. Uh, my thing is full Can we? Let me see if we can get a. Oh, let me let me move that token too. You're you're back in here. You have about one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six steps. We'll get you into the doorway. So I'm gonna get into the door, into the doorway. Okay, so you'd get right about here into the door. Yep. Do I have enough movement to get to anything else or no? Uh, that, if you dashed, you could make it, uh, you could get one, oh, you could get dash and you can make it over to that zombie, but you won't be able to attack it. But it's about to run anyway, so. And if you could get close to this zombie over here, in this corner. Is that a zombie? Yeah, it's a zombie. You could get close to him if you dashed, but I don't think he'd be right on. I think he'd be like one square away. And let me stand up. And I'll tell you, you could get to... All right, you would be right on the zombie to the east if you dashed. And you could get right next to the zombie that is next to space. So, you know, when it tried to run, you might get an attack of opportunity just like she did. But that's about it. That's all you could get to. Or you could, of course, dash and try to get close to the other zombies and yeah, all that up get here. Some melee, or you could, or, or you could fire a, a shot. That is true, I could fire shot, it's just I have a smite ready for it or right. something because because I rolled really really well. <laughs> I don't want to waste it. So for now I'm going to dash to get to the one that's next to space. Okay, you wanna be alright. So you're gonna be right here? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I've got you right there. You're right next to the zombie. So when it takes a run, you'll probably get an attack of opportunity too. Okay. All right. So now it is Mr. Hedrix's turn, and you are right, right in the doorway, Hedrix. Yeah. So um, obviously that that one zombie is within melee range. Uh, the one just to my left, in like just beyond the doorway, is it within melee range? of uh, a couple of our party members. Um, so 
I'm going to try to uh, shoot my short bow and get some sneak attack on that dude. All right, so you're going to move through the doorway and try to... Are you gonna, you want to get behind everybody else, I assume? Like right about here or something? Or here? I don't want to get like right up there or anything. Um, just, ju I'm just peeking through the doorway. Okay, so you'll be... You know what, for now, I'll just take the doorway out. So it's much easier. So you're right here. You're technically peeking through the doorway, but that's where you're at. So you can see the, you can see that zombie right there. Is that the one you're trying to hit? The one yeah, next to Yeah, that's right. Okay. Go ahead and shoot and your short bow. I will do that. So my short bow is uh, plus four. Ugh, that's just ten. Uh, well, that hits the zombie. Oh, go! Yes. All right. If you roll the um, ten, then yeah, that, that hits. Yep. Perfect. Uh, so that is a d6 plus two piercing uh, for my regular damage, uh, which is seven. I think it's still 1d6 at second level. Oh, 1d6, yeah. okay. Yeah, pretty seven sure. Plus, it's third level, I uh, think, is 2d6. 7 plus 5 uh, is 12 damage. Okay, so let's see. Um, do, 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 do. It's not yeah, down. Yeah. It's, it's you're, not... you're right, it is It is 1d6. I just read the wolf. Next level, I think, is when you get 2d6. Yeah, that's right. All right. So minus 12. You did 12, right? 12 damage, yeah. And then uh, as a bonus action, uh, I'm going to hide uh, behind the door jam. No, now, now we can not see. Now the door can hide things, guys, stream. You yep. see? <laughs> now they're like, oh, you can't see it through the door now, man, you know? Well, it's the door, the door jam, not the door itself. Oh, the door jam. Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. Stone, you know, the oh, yeah, stone, okay. Not, not the wood. That's, that's Bullshit. Soft. <laughs> Bullshit. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, your lies. It's your world. You can tell lies the way you want. All right. So uh, So I'm going to attempt to hide behind the door jam. Yeah, give me a stealth uh, check. And we'll oh, see. With a, with a 19, I am proficient in stealth. I know, I know. So you definitely pass. Um for right now, you're, it looks like you're stealthy uh, to the to the zombie, even though cool. you're in the middle of battle. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I managed to just peek in, uh, fire off one shot, and uh, and just mm. hide behind the door jam again. Mm. I'm good at this. This is this is uh. what I do. I piss off my enemies. Oh, you see how they are, stream. You you, you see how they they. <laughs> They cheat viciously. They're they're all cheaters. They they can't help themselves. All right. So next, next, next zombie is up. It's gonna run for its life. These zombies. So it's gonna try to get away, which means attack of opportunity. You already had one from, um, uh, and I didn't describe that hit that that Jimmy did, but we already said next. So we'll we'll do a good description here. All right, so Attack of Opportunity came off from Space. Space got it. She did five points of damage. And what happened? What kind of weapon do you use, Space? What was that? A firebolt. That's right. So right as Jimmy, this arrow had gone by, you know, Selenar had cast it, you know, had used this, his, uh, you know, uh, turn undead and, you know, had his holy symbol and everything out. And the light came from and all of them ran and at that moment jimmy had saw it was his chance you know where everything was distracted he got off a shot sneak attack damaged it that that shot went right through the shoulder it actually popped the shoulder bone out so you actually saw as that went there's a hole right here now in the center that you can see through of the zombie shoulder with a little bit of flesh hung on the arrow and then hit into the wall and at that moment Space, the zombie's trying to get away from, you know, Selenar's turn and dead. And Space takes that time to, to cast her firebolt. The firebolt goes ripping into the zombie. And it actually goes through the same hole 
that Jimmy had just did, but what happens is the fire goes into the hole and instead of going out the side, it's a magical fire, it spreads within the hole. So you see this damage open up, the thing is literally burning from the inside and you see licks of flame come out from inside the zombie's mouth and the eyes kind of begin to melt as well, but it's still moving around. And now Yuri gets an attack of opportunity. Yuri, are you there? Oh. I'm She's... here. Yay! Hello. Okay, yeah, we hear you. Go ahead, roll up and oh. attack. Okay, so am I allowed to use the smite I was using before, or do I have to roll a new one? It's just a straight attack uh, for attack of opportunity, I believe. Oh, okay. Just straight okay. attack. Smite okay. to it. What did you say, Richard? She can add her smite to it. Really? I wouldn't really? think that might can be added on to okay. any attack if I'm not mistaken. Well, just like if just like if Jimmy was within five feet and it ran away, he would be able to get his sneak attack on his opportunity attack. All right. Well, then the, the lawyer is saying that it can happen unless some other lawyer wants to contradict that evidence. Then we're just going to go. I'm double that. checking it right now because it might simply say on your turn. So smite it up. We only have it's one lawyer up. and he is the most forgiving lawyer. <laughs> for us, for us. If not, I will roll a new one. It is okay. Might at any time. It does not have to be on your okay. turn. Whenever you hit a creature with a melee weapon attack, it just it cannot be a ranged weapon. Okay. Smite it up. So, his, so that was a natural twenty. Vicious. Well, it's definitely going down then. Definitely going down. Yeah. So it's gonna get 14 points of slashing damage. Oh, it's down. it's down. It's down. Uh, and then there's 28 points of radiant damage. All right. 40, 42 total damage. Yep. 42. That's what 42. the f? Because the weapon, is, the weapon itself was 14 points alone, and then yeah. 40. Did you say like a four and a two? Did I yeah, hear that right? 40. Yes. What the? Three d eight. Three d eight on the radiant damage becomes six d eight. That smite literally did a fireball's worth of damage. We. That's beautiful. Oh my god! All right. Well, do you want to? Uh, well, uh, it's not down. Uh, it still has, uh, it's, one it's hit point. It still has a hit point. Left. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, you, you, you did beat that. Uh, uh, oh, okay. All right, so, uh, really, what, uh, how, you want to describe it, Yuri, or do you want me to do it? You can go for it. All right, this fucking smite is the smite of smites. She may have been a fallen paladin, Yuri, or he may have been a fallen paladin at one time, her character, but... This moment shows why Yuri was a paladin in the first place. With one bold stroke coming down, this, it doesn't just cleave it. Something different happened. It literally just implodes into a burst of light. All the zombie guts push out through the room. It gets all over Yuri, the explosion of it. You hear it, but the sound of a body popping sounds like a, a bubble going through an oily slick. It's not that quick, like a gun. It's, it's this huge pop, and all of the disease and the muck goes all over everybody. No constitution save. This is all RP. All the disease and the muck goes all over everybody. Yuri pushes her away from his face. Where's the next one? All right. And now... Since that is down. And then Selenar will look As once again to I'm Tempest. Like I told you that they have their uses. I might have misjudged this group. Uh, <laughs> As a side note, I'm like super, super shiny. No, okay. Week. I'm going to... Everybody, I'm going to roll a d5. And let's just say Lucius is uh, one... Uh, God, I took those cookies. I can't remember shit right now. I can't remember y'all's names almost. Jimmy Hedrix is two. Uh, Space is yeah. three. Uh, Yuri is four. 
Salinar is five, and Cutter is six. Pray your number doesn't come up. This this is like Wheel of Fish. Wheel of Death. All right. <laughs> All right. What? I rolled a five. Who was five? Selenar? Me. Not me. All Not right. Selenar. All right, Selenar. Let's see if it's a surprise. Roll me a perception check, but hold on. Before we do that, it's going to be a contested. I'm sorry, Selenar. I really am. Go for it. You said perception? Hold on, it's gonna be contested. Well, you can roll it, because it's just gonna be contested anyway, so. If you wanna roll it now, it doesn't matter. You still have your roll up there. <laughs> you find this damn thing up here. Inspiration from one of the previous sessions. What'd you say? Oh, I'm I just... asking the chat to remind me whether or not I have inspiration. I did at one point have inspiration. I think I used it versus the bear. Oh, yeah, I wasn't there for that, so I, I wouldn't know. Uh, I, I had left you to be eaten by a bear. Yeah, I don't think I currently have inspiration. Hold on, I should be on the character I feel sheet. like you survived that. that yeah, that, I don't that have it anymore. Probably because you had inspiration. Well, no, I also had Shield of Faith and Sanctuary up, and it couldn't get yeah. to Sanctuary. Oh, for sure. You had, you you did the whole the whole tank thing. So, Tony. Yes. Good luck. I rolled a seven. Oh, I'm pretty sure they're gonna beat that. For some reason, I, I rolled can't... a natural one. Yeah, for some reason I can't. <laughs> for some reason I can't find it here. So I'm gonna have to roll a natural. Just do it like this. Uh, and their skills are stealth plus four plus six in dim light or darkness. So I'm just so, going. To... Plus, so just roll. Type slash R 1d20 oh, plus got... 6. Oh, there's an easier way. You just hit the dice roll uh, thing right here. See? There's actual on the left hand side. What did I get? Pretty sure I. Unless natural I rolled a 20. 1. <laughs> you don't see a damn thing. I rolled uh, a natural 1, you rolled a natural 20. Alright, so. I am uh, literally turning back and I am snarking at uh, Tempest while whatever is about to happen is happening. As you're doing that. You know, you're turned around to Tempest, because Tempest is this way. You see a horrified look on Tempest's face, as from behind you, from the very shadows itself, two inky black creatures come standing up right behind you, forming from the shadows into what looks like a wispy humanoid form. You don't now, even see it. What? Tony, I have a question for you. Yes. Uh, were they in the room when I used my undead sense or my turn undead? No, they were not. They were coming from the office. They came through. They heard the commotion okay. and came through the area back because here. Because if they were, I would have I would have sensed that they were there, but that's okay. Well, guys, it's been fun. <laughs> no, no, no. You're, dude, the other team, you guys are kicking ass. You're doing much better. There's no way you're a dude. No, you're fine. Tony. I'm unaware of them, so they have advantage on their strikes. You're fine. You're gonna survive. Even if you go down, you're fine. The, the other team has three or four people go down. Come on. You guys got, got this. Alright. So, you don't make me feel bad, Richard. Go <laughs> for it. No, go for it. Stop making me feel bad. I don't want to play. Go I don't want to play. Fucking All roll right. your attack. Yeah, no, motherfucker, do it. Hit All me. Right. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Alright. <laughs> All right, so I'm a uh, bicycle. I like the first, the, fir the, like the, the first one. <laughs> we're gonna roll the, the dice roll here. Hold on a second. Let me get this out of here. There we I go. I like the fact that Solidar is not afraid to get hit, <laughs> and I just find it really funny. Did it? Did it hit you that first roll? Did the first one get uh, you? Roll again because you're rolling with advantage. Ah. Uh. Eighteen plus what? Plus three. Yeah, no, my AC is a yeah. fucking uh my AC is a sixteen. Oh I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. It's actually eighteen. Uh still hits, yeah. Yeah, it was still hit, yeah. As it's plus four strength drain to hit. 
Uh, plus mm. melee weapon attack. <laughs> I'll, 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 since I can't put it up on the damn screen, because I can't do the rolls on the screen for some reason, I had this problem last game. Uh, Roll20 needs to fix this. It's a plus four to hit, reach plus five, one creature, hit 2d6 plus two, necrotic damage. The target strength score is reduced by one uh, d4. The target dies if this reduces its strength to zero. Otherwise, the reduction lasts until the target finishes a short or long rest. All right, so. so yep, necrotic damage. Um, roll of 1d4, I'll roll of 1d4, you want to roll it? Uh, uh, actually, I just did. I think I just rolled it. Uh, you yeah, took yeah, only one. Well, yeah. can, can I, can I use your roll instead of mine? <laughs> oh, no. Well, that means for the rest of the fight, I roll your necrotic damage then. I'm fine with that. It's all right, we'll use my number then. <laughs> all right, so I lose one strength instead of four. All right, and then the next one attacks. Plus four is 12. 12 Plus yeah. it with advantage, because I'm not aware of oh, it. Oh, that's right. See, at least you're honest now. See, I appreciate it. I'm honest on both ends, Tony. I've told I you that before. One. I know. And I got a three. That's 12, yeah. So both 12 will miss. All right, so the set first one comes up behind uh, Selenar. As Selenar and you, is... you still need to roll 2d6 plus whatever for the necrotic oh, damage. Oh, that's right. I mean, doing it. And I'm so used to doing it on that. All right, one, two, plus two as well. So it's 2d6 plus two. So, so it's 10 actually necrotic damage. 10 necrotic. All right, so as Rich is, uh, not Rich, as Selenar is kind of like jeering over at is the new person in the party space and you know space is like you know whatever you know just chilling and now selenar all of a sudden realizes looks at space face and space's eyes just wide and she she could see it and selenar all too late turns around and at that moment coming this these tentacles come right into him and they seem to grasp into his very soul through his armor and into his very his chest it feels like it's moving around pulling at his pulling at him he feels his ebb force being pulled away his life force some of his memories are actually being pulled away with it. his very humanity itself is being drained from him and uh, he screams in pain as he just feels it pull his veins begin to pop a little bit harder and uh, as this shadow just grows in strength that seems to absorb it and just feels a, almost like a, a malevolent pleasure out of what it's doing to Selenar. And the other shadow tries to come in, but it's, you know, for whatever reason, it's not able to get to Rich. Rich is able to, or Selenar is able to just get out of the way, dealing with the other shadow at the other tentacles. It's able to grasp onto their holy symbol and is able to just pray hard enough that that shadow is not able to get in and get a secondary attack, the other one. All right. All righty. Now we're going to roll initiative for shadows. And that is a two plus a uh, their dex uh, plus two. So it's a four. Perfect. If I'm not mistaken. They sound like they're the last ones. I think they're a four. Well, they're going to be a four right are, are they going <laughs> on this turn, on this round? Yes, they will. Are they going if I can... next round? Or was that a surprise? That was a surprise because Richard didn't detect. Right, there was yeah. No, that's okay. why I did the contested, the contested perception roll. So we'll yeah, say four, four. Initiative is just based on dex and that. All right. So four for the shadows. And that means they would go... After the zombies. The zombies are already, so technically it's the top of the round, so. Bam, bam. Get out of there. And it's now Selenar's turn. I see these things. I feel the weakness coursing through me. <laughs> Selenar just starts laughing and you actually see the black tattoos that course down their face have sort of darkened and spread a bit. This is clearly not the first time they've dealt with something like this. They 
utter a divine word, and I need both of the shadows to give me a constitution saving throw. Do it. Do it, Selenor. All right, con. Let's see if there's any negatives on his con. Con is plus one. So whatever I roll, just add a plus one. D20 plus one. What was that roll? I can't see that. Ooh, it's oh, 20. 20. Yeah, that one definitely passed. And then next roll. Plus one, whatever it is, three. So the that's three will it. definitely fail. Yep. So the second one, the one that missed me, takes six radiant damage from it. All right. And if I'm not mistaken, shadows are also a little more susceptible to that, right? Let's read. Pretty sure you're right. They have um, a vulnerability. Only because you guys were just Sun dealing with them in Death House. It doesn't say that. It says sunlight. Exact words. While in sunlight, no. the shadow has Tony, disadvantage. Look at, look at their vulnerabilities and resistances. That's what I mean. Damage vulnerability. Oh, yeah. Radiant. Okay. I'm sorry. You're right. Radiant. So they take that one takes 12 radiant damage. Ooh, well, there you go. All right. You Fuck can... you. Are you looking at the monsters while you're fighting them, Rich? No, Tony. Two week, two sessions ago, you guys were dealing. With I know, them I know. House. Shadows. I know. I know we had shadows. <laughs> I know. I was there in Death House. I remember. <laughs> I was there. All right. So they took 12. That one that missed you. Yep. And okay, minus 12. All right. You want to describe how it, how it affects the shadow, or do you want me to do that? Go for it. All right. So as you know, Rich or Selenar cast this, the ra you see this ball of light. The shadow, if fear, if you could see fear, because its face is kind of like a misty uh, kind of impression of a face. You kind of see like a mouth and eyes. But if you could see fear as that light, the eyes and what almost could be a mouth seems to be a gape with also an ultimate fear as this light comes approach it the shadow dissipates for just a second shock its eyes and hands and everything just go up pushing back into the darkness itself but then it reforms but it looks much smaller than it was before but it's still reformed and wisping and swirling all around selenar all right and now it is tempest's turn Okay, seeing as Selenar is, is loving this pain that he's feeling right now, I'm just going to shake my head at him, and I'm going to move up uh, 30 feet towards the zombies, and then I'm going to try to thunderclap uh, the zombies All if right. I'm in within range. All right. They do have damage resistance to thunder, but go for it. You have to, um, D, uh, it's a DC 15, um, save. Gotcha. Hold on. Damn, another one. Wow. DM has one, four two. crits tonight. Oh, man. Another natural 20. Two crits in a row. Woo. Three. All right. Do it. Yep. Do it. All right, so he obviously passed it. So you you were attacking the one that was the weakest one. I take it, uh, space. Yeah. Um. I'm sorry. Where where which zombie am I? I don't know what zombie I'm attacking. Oh, I, was, I thought you were attacking a shadow. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. The the zombies. Well, the roll would still apply because I rolled a generic d20. So I still rolled a crit 20. Um. And they don't, I'm sorry, they don't have any type of resistance, I think, to uh, thunder. I'm sorry, I, I, was, I, I was thinking you were attacking the shadow on your friend there. Obviously, you could care less, but that's fine, you're evil, so that makes sense. Um, yeah, all right, so how much damage was that? Uh, you, you missed, so I'm fine, I don't take any damage. I'm not mistaken, right? And trip, so no. Nope. All right, so you're good, that's it. You've moved up to your space. Uh, yes, that's it. All right. Next is... Well, the skeletons are still running. What round is this? There's six seconds. What is it per round? Ten seconds or six seconds? Six. Six seconds six. round. It needs ten rounds. It's yeah, only so been ten. one round. Yeah, so it's going to be a minute. Well, this is actually the second round, round the second one. Yeah, it's been six seconds. 
Okay, so they're still jetting. They're gone. No turn, no turn. All right, cutter. All right. Uh, it takes 10 movement to stand up, right? Uh, I believe it takes half your movement to stand up. All right, half so, your movement. All right, so cutter's up. So, okay, uh, I'll stand up and um, looks like I'm probably in range to move up if I need to. Uh, but I'm going to test the waters here. I'm going to shoot an arrow at the wounded shadow. See if, if I can even do damage to this thing because he's not encountered something like this before. Here, I turn the camera so, a little. Longbow. There you so go. He's going to fire at the wounded shadow. Here we go. Longbow. All right. Shoot it up. Did you get it? Which, oh, yeah, you definitely hit. So, four points of damage. All right. Let's see how much that shadow had. Oh, you did the, to the wounded one you did, too? Yeah. All right. Well, guess what? How do you want to do it? Uh, he's going to aim straight for its um, strange maw of a head, uh, hoping that there's some similarity to human and humanoid structure. Aim right between the eyes and it rips right through it and as it rips through it the whole thing kind of splits in half and kind of dissipates down and whatever kind of emotive reaction it would have as it's dying yet again all right so it is down the first shot hey wait who was it selenar that was all scared somebody was all like scared got their they were freaking out pissing their pants got brown pants on selenar selenar Oh, I just I'm know that Shadow's sapping strength is not fucking fun. Yeah, I should not be ripping you. I'm so screwed on Sunday. He's so gonna kill oh, me yeah. on Sunday. <laughs> the whole house is your enemy on Sunday. Good luck getting out. All right. So Go ahead I... and burn all of your 20s this stream so you get none of them on Sunday. Because <laughs> you're gonna need them. So now it's Lucius' turn. And Lucius is actually, you can't see, it. I'll put it up here because y'all were kind of like up here. But JC had to move y'all because of the cam and you were behind the door buck jam there okay there you go Lu what does lucius want to do actually he was the right. other one is undamaged yes yes ah did not mean to click that the other one is undamaged you are correct um lucius at this point is going to cast mage armor Okay. It's up. Mage it up. All right. And now, then, since that is Lucius's turn, it is now Yuri's turn. Yuri, you there? Hello. Yuri's talking, but we can't hear her. Yuri, you're muted. Hello. Hello. There you there are. You go, there, there you go. go. Yay, sorry, I muted my mic actually. I have a thing on my actual thing. Um So my roles just seem to be doing very, very well today. And um, <laughs> I think do I have, do I have enough movement to get to the shadow out of curiosity? Oh yeah, you got enough movement. Because the compass you need to is move just, five feet. Yeah, you can Five, ten. I mean, you definitely got enough movement to make it to the shadow. Let me move the compass out the way. There you go. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go right up to the shadow, and I'm yet again going to use my smite. Yuri. Yes. Before you do that, if you flank yeah. the shadow with me, you would have advantage. Ooh. What's with that cross table talk? Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> this is coming from the man that talks to party members that are five rooms away. Me? No. No. <laughs> Roll tape. All right, so we're flank. <laughs> so we're flanking the shadow, so I can get so I can get out of that discussion. Uh, so <laughs> All right, so shadow is now flanked. So that will give you advantage, Yuri. So even. Oh yeah, no, but I don't think I need it for this one because it's just gonna be That's just gonna be more pain. Oh Lu well, you now make sure you hit. Yeah now watch her roll Ooh. a one watch her roll a one and a three. 
Oh, no, crit? That's another crit. No, oh, oops. I can't even see it. So, no, because I'm using dice. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay. I'm just... That's why. Um. All right, so you crit, go ahead and, and hit it. How much damage did you do? So that's 14 points of flashing damage and 32 points of radiant damage. All right. So, so how, how much for Radiant? So it's 32. Oh, well, that, that to go ahead and it's down. That fight so was much quicker Yuri, than the good dream. <laughs> That's because tough. it's vulnerable. Yeah. That did 64 Radiant. Damage. All right. All right. All right. That, that okay. 78 damage. Oh, God. That that's impossible. That that should not be possible at second. <laughs> I'm serious. At second level, that's just way too much, man. I mean, in my opinion. That's the only thing about fifth edition. I have a pro some of the some of the things are a little bit over P O P when you're doing seventy some Listen, points of damage if, at level if two. If you wanted to run an older Maybe. an older system, we could do that. We could game that. Nah, system too. nah, yeah. Tony. Nah, keep in mind, nah. the paladin is built to do that specifically ah. to undead and feet. That is a. Hey, it's okay. I'm not that type of DM. You all know me, man. I ain't that type. I've had so many cookies. I could care less what y'all do right now. Y'all could be pissing. Y'all could y'all could be pissing in the dungeon. I'd be cool with it. All right. So, how do you you want to describe it, Yuri? You can go for it. Go for it. All right. So Yuri comes over. She, before she even does, she 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 or he spits because it's a boy he spits. Takes out the sword or the great what is it? Great axe you're using, Yuri. It's a great axe. Takes out the great axe, comes over, and the shadow doesn't even see it. It's so focused on Selenar trying to get his strength, absorb his power, and it's kind of angry. It has a sense of rage for Selenar because it knows it's a cleric, someone that's connected to that that ethereal world that, you know, it's lost its life, and now it's trapped there on another plane, and it wants to trap him as well. And in that that anger and that blind passion to get Selnar does not oh that was my laptop battery about to die. It does not see the Selenar and all right, so does not see Yuri, and Yuri's able to come with one long side slash, takes off what would be the head of the shadow. The arms come up as if to grab this illusionary head, and as it does, the fingers, arms, and the body dissipate and slink and become shadow itself once more. And with that, it is down. And we are definitely at the point where it is time to stop because that is the end of the battle. All right. I mean, there's, uh, there's, there are still a bunch of zombies like trying to run away, right? Yeah, we'll hold up. We'll, 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 we'll hold that off. Yeah, that's what I thought. We'll do a quick little click, uh, remember next time. Uh, cause it's like 943. We'll just have to start with a little bit of RPing and then you all can just kill zombies. <laughs> so, cause I imagine they Honestly, will not Honestly, take... Tony. Yes. If everyone else is up for it, we could easily say we just methodically go one by one and take them out as a group. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, rather than maybe, maybe we could turn it into a group That's skill true. check instead. I like that. Group skill check and to decide how, how, and if you fail it, everybody just takes a certain amount of damage, but you still defeat the zombies or whatever. It was a little bit hard of a right. fight. I like that. Do that me, sounds good to me. Straight D20. Roll over a D20. Everyone killed it, no problem. Roll less than a D20. Everybody loses a third of their... I mean, less than a 10. Everybody loses a third of their health. Oh, whoa, whoa. That's mm. a lot. That's a, that's a straight D20? <laughs> all right. Higher like than 10. I said a third. Oh, let's I'd play say, it out. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'll be merciful. 20% then. Has to be a little bit here. And we're we're all rolling in and we're, we're taking... No, what, just one roll. One roll. Just one roll. One person oh. roll. Yeah, just one person roll. Okay. Oh, can I roll? I mean, I I'm, I don't care who you rolls. You can't see my roll, actually. Doesn't matter who rolls. Cool. I'll uh, trust so you I, on your I, roll. I'm gonna roll. Oh, I I passed. All right. So no, I, did, I didn't pass. No, I didn't pass. I got right. six. 
Well, y'all go around and it's a little bit of a harder battle with the zombies and the skeletons than you anticipated. You know, when you hit one, they come back to life. You had a few bad rolls in there. Jimmy wasn't focusing. He was eating. Uh, Cutter was yeah. flexing. Uh, you know, your new teammate mm -hmm. Space was trying to moonwalk on the air, dancing on air. And, you know, Lucius still had a pain and Selenar was, you know, trying to get his, uh, their strength back. And, of course, Yuri... Uh, was busy saying, "Well, I can't hear you." And, Hold on, what do you say? <laughs> we love you, or I just had the slight joke on the on the tech audio issues. All right, so so, uh, so everybody survived that battle. And next week on this coming Friday stream, uh, usually we alternate between good and evil, but since evil has to finish this area before we move on to chapter three. There'll be Evil Team again this coming Friday at 6 p.m. So check us out. And uh, don't forget to follow us on our social media, Discord. You can check out and talk to us in there. See all the crazy stuff that we do. Yeah, it gets... It, obviously, we get crazy. So if you can't tell. Uh, but yeah, check us social media, Facebook. We have lots of pictures of builds like I've done besides just this map. You know, I've got all sorts of build pictures and mini pictures and all sorts of stuff up there you can check out. And if anybody, I don't know if anybody uh, I saw some follows tonight. Thank you for the follows. I don't know if anybody subbed or cheered, but if you did, I missed it. Thank you so much. We appreciate all the support. We take all your criticism and advice and we do try to implement it. The party will actually tell you that we have something in Discord called Stream Suggestions and I actually go through and I mark things uh, that as we finish them. So once I do, you say like this pen, for example, this laser pen was actually a suggestion by Selenar. And the compass, I can't remember who suggested the compass, but it was another one of the players. So we do listen to your suggestions. We don't just say, okay, yeah, and, and blow you off. We listen because we're trying to make it better for y'all. So join us next week. And if you're interested playing in playing a Kalimba game, right now. Yes, I don't know who's I'm doing play that. I'm playing a Kalimba. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> my game. But if anybody's interested, we also do private games. And don't forget to check us out Sunday uh, when Rich is going to be the DM. And you'll get to see me be a player as a 70-year-old vampire hunter out for revenge against the vampire who killed his wife and son in the Curse of Strahd. And I even took the venerable choice to make myself weaker at 70 to get a higher intelligence and higher wisdom because I don't like to meta. I'd like to really get into sure. it. He uh, says as he has the highest strength in the party. That, I, it's not my fault that I still rolled a freaking 18. You yeah. saw the roll. Also, <laughs> just so you guys know, on Sunday, we will be finishing Death House as they try to make their escape from the house they've been stuck in for the past five sessions. They need to make their way out of the house yes, as it's finally. trying to kill them now before they can get on to the adventure proper. Yes, Trust yes. me, this session coming up is going to be very high stakes, very high stress, and you will not want to miss it. All right. Well, stream, that is it. We're going to go ahead and go on out, and uh, I'll say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye, guys.